Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order um, the regular board meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Dalton for Monday, May 2nd. It is now 6.40. If you would uh, give us a call to roll, Madam Clerk. Trustee Brown? Here. Trustee Pearson? Here. Trustee Stubbs? Here. Trustee Muhammad? Here. Trustee Hunt? Here. Trustee Henyer? Present. Okay, let the record reflect that all members of the board are here. We have a quorum. Uh, if everybody would stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you remain standing, <laughs> I ask the trustee Pearson lead us in prayer tonight. Everybody bow your head, please. Father God, we come to you tonight and ask you to wrap your arms around this room so that we can all be on one accord. We thank you for giving us all safe passage to this village hall for this board meeting for the village of Dalton. It's with your grace that I know that we will all be able to meet with one mind and stay focused tonight to do the work of the people. It's in your precious son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let's all say amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Pearson. <laughs> okay, first thing on the agenda is the village clerk report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At this time, I would ask for a motion or motions to approve the minutes of the April 4th, 2016 regular board meeting and the April 18, 2016 meeting of the Committee of the Hall. I get a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, minutes of April 4th regular board meeting and April 18th um, cow meeting. Second. So motion and second to approve the minutes as stated. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. Roll call. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Pearson? Aye. Trustee Stubbs? Aye. Trustee Muhammad? Aye. Trustee Hunt? Aye. Trustee Henyer? Aye. Motion carries. Madam Clerk? I have no communications this evening, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. Um, engineer's report. Uh, thank you this evening, Mayor, uh, Village Trustees, Madam Clerk. This is Mike on. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks. And the residents from the Village of Dalton. Just have a couple things in my report. Um, first, I have a detailed um, update on the Pace bus shelters. Um, there's about 20 lines there, so uh, when you do have time, please review it. Give me a call or shoot me an email if you have any questions about uh, where we're at with the uh, Pace bus shelters. Um, basically, Pace is removing and replacing a lot of bus shelters. They're turning those existing bus shelters into lighted ad shelters that will provide revenue to the village of Dalton. And some of the ones that they are uh, going to remove and replace with ad shelters, they're going to relocate those to other areas where we don't currently have shelters. Uh, the second item I have, there is an ITEP grant application that's available for the village. Uh, it's an Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program grant um, that is a combination of uh, streetscaping with lighting. Um, basically what we're going to apply for is to uh, rescape and to update the lighting um, basically from Old Village Hall going east then turning up Chicago Road from Lincoln to 144th on Chicago Road. We're going to remove and replace the existing sidewalk, um, remove and replace the lighting to new enhanced um, decorative lighting, um, and then also put some planters, um, some benches, some tree, tree grates, and some uh, other scenic beautification items. So um, that actually is due uh, no later than June 17th, and I'll be working with Matt the public works superintendent on getting that grant application together and submitting that um, for approval. And that's all I have this evening. Do you expect any of that work if the grant is approved to start this year? 
Um, the grant submission period is from May 2nd to June 17th. Review and selection is June to August. Selection is in fall of 216. Um, so you, the funding won't be available until next year. Okay. So. Thanks. Thank you very much. Question, engineer. Yes. Uh, again, um, the date of completion of the um, Pace Bus shelters. Um, it's, it's on a kind of a roaming cycle. Um, first, in some of the areas where Pace has to put new foundations for the ad shelters, um, they have to receive permits from the state. So depending on when they receive those permits, then uh, Pace will build the foundations for those new ad shelters, and after that, they will install the ad shelters. But if you look kind of at the final paragraph, um, they're constantly doing work now, but their shelter manufacturer sometime in May or June, they're going to be ordering and delivering the shelters, and then plus or minus 90 days after that, um, there'll be new bus shelters that'll be installed. So um, basically, we're kind of at the whim of the state as far as approving the permits, and then the company um, bidding out and purchasing the shelters itself and then installation. So um, there'll be ongoing progress with the ad bus shelters for the remainder of the year. Thank you. Okay, and I'll keep you updated as more information becomes available. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Urban. Thank you, Mayor. The next item on the agenda will be committee reports. First one would be police and fire. Good evening, everyone. Let me give you a little update on um, the po community policing meeting that was held last week. It was a great success. Uh, we had several residents show up and really got engaged with uh, conversation and things that we could do for the community. I mean, it was really great. Uh, we would like to see more residents come out. So the challenge today is that everyone, uh, every resident to show up at the next meeting and bring somebody that's going to be uh, the third Thursday of the chief? The last Thursday. Thursday. The, the last Thursday of May. And it's going to be at the police department uh, upstairs. And it starts at 7.30. Uh, seven o'clock so I would like to see that room filled because everybody has concerns in the community but a lot of people didn't show up but we still ended up with a nice crowd and it was great it was a lot of involvement and uh, we ended up going uh, a lot longer than we had planned to go but it was a, a just a wonderful activity there and I'd like to see everybody show up also we had clean sweep Dalton and that's where we that was really a success this year. We had 200 people show up, or uh, nearly 200, I should say, and we were able to get a lot done. Uh, we also had a, a, a group show up that, that reported in late uh, the night before and, and decided to come out with some equipment and go in an area where there's a lot of dumping, and uh, there's still work to do back there. But they really came out and, and did a big job. We had Swap was out here with 30. Uh, maybe 40 people, and uh, it, we, we cooked food afterwards, hamburgers, hot dogs, and had a good time. And we're, we're probably going to do it again this year, but that's a big task to pull off. And, and I know a lot of people are saying the streets ended up filthy the next day, but it was a great effort, and we are trying to make a difference. We are going to be bringing to the board um, garbage cans to put out because we see that that's one of the issues. And if we could get garbage cans up and down our main streets, maybe people will put the garbage in those cans and stop littering. But I wanted to say thank you to Trustee Stubbs, put her heart in it. Um, uh, Pastor LaFleur from a New Community and Bishop Lance Davis from <coughs> New Zion, as well as Mr. Arrington from Thorn Ridge. We had a lot of people uh, put their hearts into trying to get the community clean. And I just want to say thank you. From the police chief, uh, Dalton Police continues to place emphasis on the safety of children on their way to school and home. A small detail was put in place to ticket those drivers 
that go around stop school buses with the arms down and extended. The canine and handler is in their final week of training. They both graduate this Friday, which is May 6th, and will be placed into action right away. At future events, the PD will conduct canine demonstrations. A reminder, the gun bag buyback program will begin, I mean, will be on May 14th at the police station from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. If the turnout is large, the hours will be extended to accommodate all those that want to turn in their weapons. Guns are turned in, I mean, that are turned in will be melted down. Help save a life. Help get guns off the street. And this will be at 14030 Park Avenue. Hashtag one less gun. Uh, the, there are flyers up there. Uh, let's see, is there any more information here? The guns will be, you know, just the bad back dates May 14th, 2016, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Receive $100 MasterCard gift card for turning in a, a working firearm. Receive $50 MasterCard uh, for turning in a replica firearm. This effort is to help prevent violence in our community at, and our neighborhood. By continual, I mean, by turning in guns, you can help us save lives. No questions will be asked. You will not be asked any questions regarding the firearm or the identification, and that is guaranteed. Uh, the firearm must be unloaded, must be delivered in a bag. Ammunition is accepted. There is no cash given for ammunition. And for more information, call the Dalton Police Department at 708-201-3200. Keep our community safe. Again, that's hashtag one less gun. And thanks for that, Chief. From police, I mean from Fire Chief McCain, on June 18, 2016, the village of Dalton. Uh, fire department along with Cairo One Health Services will be hosting a health fair at Dalton Fire Station 1 from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Additional information will be made available in the near future on the VODalton.org flyers and channel 4 and 99. Other, uh, let's see, the Public Safety Vehicle Parade and Public Safety Expo will follow the coffee with the mayor in June 2016. In August 2016, the Dalton Fire Department will be hosting a smoke detector giveaway, blood drive, and CPR training for all Dalton residents. In October 2016, Fire Prevention Month, with an open house scheduled for October 22nd, uh, 2016. On October 28, 2016, the Fire Department will be hosting the annual Trick or Treat, and the Fire Department, I mean, and the Fire Department this Friday, bef uh, the Friday before Halloween. Beginning in November and concluding in December 2016, the annual toy drive will, and food drive will be conducted. That was a great success last year. Uh, we had a lot of people come out. We gave out a lot of bags of groceries and a lot of toys, so we hope everybody participates. I know it's early, but it'll be nice to see everybody come out again for that this year. Lastly, as of April 30th, 2016, the Dalton Fire Department has responded to 1,465 emergency incidents, which is 149 responses more than last year during the same time period. Uh, Chief, I want to thank you because the fire department is doing an excellent job. I mean, I see these guys out there working hard, and uh, you have brought some real class to the fire department. I'm glad to have you as our chief. I want to say thank you. Uh, from Matt Stacy, our public works superintendent. Cook County SWAT was out working on the streets in the village uh, April 11th, 16th, 17th, 23rd, and 24th. Matt, that's fantastic. Thank you. And today, the, uh, the paper, they picked a paper along the main roads and cut some vacant lots here in the village. Cook County Sheriff Work Program was out and, and demolished a vacant home at 13844 Lincoln Avenue. That was great to see that come down uh, because that was an eyesore. Uh, Public Works Department, 
demolished two hazardous garages and two vacant homes on 147 block of Princeton, and on the, uh, the other one was on the 146 block of Atlantic. Public Works have removed 20 dead trees in the parkways through the village, also repaired a water main break on 149th and Chicago Road. The street Sweeper program to begin this month and program will follow your garbage pickup day. Stop and go light at 154th and Greenwood. Parts have been ordered and traffic light will be working within this month. Uh, equipment status. Chipper truck is back in service after repairs were made to the clutch. The street sweeper is back in service after changing a conveyor belt. Uh, second tractor is in service with the Moore deck attached and working and working with Verizon and GPS program to put public safety vehicles along with a monthly maintenance program for the vehicles. Matt, thank you very much. Mayor, that's all I have today and thank you. Thanks you, Trustee Pearson. Okay, next item would be housing report. Good evening, everyone. The Village of Dalton, a community working together. And that's what we had last weekend with the clean sweep. I want to thank everybody also for coming out and helping us clean our community. This report is by Denise Fields of Housing. We would like to ensure properties meet safety code, help prevent loss of lives and property, ensure properties are well maintained, also ensure adequate living standards. The 2016 through 17 annual rental license and inspection program has officially ended. If you have not yet paid your rental fee, you must do so immediately. The 2016 to 17 license period began May 1st, 2016 through April 30th, 2017. All, fields, all fees will double after April the 13th, 2016. A $100 fee penalty will be assessed to all that did not comply. Please direct your questions to the Housing Department at 708-201-3263. Thank you for helping maintain the quality of life and housing in the village of Dalton. Where do I report an abandoned and or vacant property? The lawn and weeds are out of control. Listen closely. To report a vacant property in need of lawn care and or property maintenance, contact Village of Dalton Housing Department 708-201-3263. That's the main number. Or you can send a fax to 708-201-3233. Items needed, property address, a brief description of the prop, uh, problem associated with the property. This can be reported anonymously via telephone if you come into the office there is a complaint form. On the website, go to report a concern. The Village of Dalton looks forward to working together to make Dalton a great and safe place to live. And we have some flyers back there. Don't get a ticket and it'll explain more in detail what you need to do uh, to upkeep your property. And, Mayor, that's the end of my report. I want to thank you all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda would be the committee report regarding the Melanie Fitness Center. Good evening, residents of Dalton and guests. Um, Saturday, May 21st, it's Saturday, May 21st, we'll be celebrating from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. the 15th anniversary 
of the Melanie Fitness Center. It's an anniversary slash membership appreciation day. And we'll have performance by Hip Hop Detox. We'll have a bouncy house for the children along with a clown that does face painting. We'll have martial arts demonstrations by Cook Sue and uh, Master uh, Anthony of the uh, United Schools of Survival. We also have a special new membership package that will be available. And for those persons who are interested in being vendors, you can call the gym at 708 849, I believe that's 2400. Uh, and as for Ishmael, um, some of the special guests that we're having and we're working on having some more is Craig Hodges, formerly of the Chicago Bulls, champion three-point shooter. We'll also have Dr. Terry Mason of the Cook County Department of Health. <laughs> and that's it for my um, fitness, Melanie Fit. <clears throat> the next is for the youth. First, I want to thank uh, the mayor and um, for his cooperation along with Public Works, Matt Stacy and his team um, for helping clear the property at 140, um, 140th and uh, Lincoln. And if those of you have driven by there, uh, you see where they've gotten rid of a lot of the weeds and the dead trees. And we also want to uh, thank SWAP because um, the mayor worked it out where we had SWAP to go in there and then clean it around. Tomorrow they'll be starting, hopefully, on the back where we'll be doing the urban gardening. They're going to mow that, those weeds and bushes down in the back where we'll have urban gardening for the uh, children. I won't go too much into the youth report because um, part of it the mayor will probably do in the uh, mayor's address concerning um, what we kicked off today at a press conference this morning and he'll probably go into detail and I believe he has a, a, a videotape that helps to uh, explain that. And lastly, I have the um, finance committee uh, report. Our auditors, Lauder, Back, and Amen are out this week for field work. They're in-house completing the fiscal year 15 audit. Uh, we'll pass on the schedule for the fiscal year 15 audit once it has been given to us. The first budget meeting was held on Thursday, April 21st. The next meeting is scheduled for Monday, May 9th at 5.30 p.m. And that's upstairs in the training room at the police station. It is our hope to have the budget approved by the end of May. Thank you, Mayor. That's the end of my reports. <coughs> the next item on the agenda, Mayor, would be the trustees' reports. Okay. Any trustee want to uh, make a report tonight? Good evening, residents. Thank you guys for coming out this evening. I have a couple things to announce to you guys. Uh, first, employment, which everyone always asks me for jobs. Um, first, Ingalls Health Systems is hiring for two positions, Benefit Specialist, Customer Service Associate, which is in South Holland location, and the Benefit Specialist is in Harvey. Next, we have Menards. They're hiring for a manager trainee in Homewood, Family Dollar, is hiring for assistant store manager in Harvey. Southwest Community Services hiring for a site supervisor in Homewood. And Mr. Urban, is the village hiring for anything? I was informed today by Mr. Stacy in Public Works that he has posted positions on our webpage for laborers in the Public Works Department. So if anybody want to work here at the Village of Dalton, Mr. Urban just announced that we are hiring in um, Public Works. See Matt Stacy, who is the superintendent. Um, last but not least, I am hiring. For those that don't know, I own Good Burger Restaurant in Calumet City. The address is 634 Burnham. Again, Calumet City. I'm hiring for a cook slash cashier. So anybody that has experience or a sanitation license, please see myself or stop in. Um, again, that address is 634 Burnham and the name of my restaurant is called Good Burger. Um, next is the council walk. We are having a council walk on June 11, which is a Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. Again, June 11 is the date, which is a Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon. We will start at the Dorchester and we will walk down Greenwood. We got a route. We got a different route, so I'll just say that for last. Um, if you would like to help or even be on the council committee, contact myself at 708-297-6859. Again, the number is 708-297-6859. And that's our council walk this June 11. For those that don't know, we did pass the ordinance say, saying that you guys can have a free holiday permit. What that is, is you, the resident, come into the village and apply for this permit. You still have to apply to get approved, do the work, and then we still come out and check the work. It's just free. You don't pay for the permit. So again, that date is from April 1st is when we passed it to June 1st. So you got 30 days left in order to come in and get this free permit holiday. Um, expungements. Uh, Dorothy Brown, the clerk, 
of the Cook County Court is having an expungement seminar on June 4th. Myself, Stan Brown, and um, Mike Smith from Dixmore, we all joined up with her, and we're having an expungement on May 14th, which is a Saturday, at New Zion Church, which is uh, 14200 Chicago Road. Um, if anybody have a background, um, felony, misdemeanors, or anything like that, you might want to attend that just so you can get the help that you need. Again, that date is May 14th, which is a, which is a Saturday, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. at New Zion Church. Um, anybody in the state of Illinois can attend that. You don't have to live here in the village of Dalton only. End of my report. Thank you. All right, so I'm bad. Touch it. Trustee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to speak on behalf of the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, they're now hiring. Are you qualified for a job with the U.S. Postal Service? Qualifications, a U.S. citizen, no experience necessary, no education requirements. Receiving a starting bonus of up to $1,000. Today there are 1,096 level, entry level uh, jobs available at the U.S. Postal Service all across the country. Starting pay is $21 per an hour with benefits on an average. No experience is necessary. High school diploma or either GED is not required if you are 18 years old. Federal benefits for career employees. Average postal worker makes $72,000 a year. Paid on the job training and paid vacations and also a great retirement plan. You can go on U.S. Postal Service job. Also, the IBW Local 134 and the Electrical Contractors Association sponsors apprenticeship program in Cook County, Illinois through the Electrical Joint Apprenticeship and Training Trust. Has permission from the U.S. Department of Labor to open a registration for new applicants for its electrical and communication program. For more inf information on these programs, please go to the website www.ejatt. Dot com. That's www.ejatt.com. That's for the apprenticeship for the local 134 uh, electrical union. Also, we have a field maintenance technician. Contractors and preservation company is looking to immediately, immediately hire someone who poses the following skills and abilities to manage below scopes of responsibility. Abilities to use and familiarize with basic hand tools and power tools, generators, compressors. No free of heights, able to complete through grass cutting and leaf removal, snow removal, minor roof patches, repairs, property condition inspection, winterization, securing lock changes, board ups, repair of windows and exterior doors, minor plumbing, some pump replacement or repairs, or water pump. You can contact Mr. Von Ryko. That's Von Ryko and Kevin Turner. The number is 708-914-4274. That's 708-914-4274. Also, if you're a senior citizen, 60 years of age or older, living in a single family home with no able-bodied person under the age of 60, you can receive this weekly weather permitting lawn mowing service through the Thorn Township. So if you're 60 and over, you can uh, go online to thorntownship.com or you can either, either call 708-596-6040, extension 4016. If you're over the age of 60, uh, you can actually get your lawn cut through the uh, requirements that may fit uh, your yearly uh, income. Also, um, we are on about the last step right here with the Step Alive Teen Stepper Program. In this program, you will learn the dance of Chicago-style stepping, compete for five $1,000 scholarships, compete for the title of Stepper of the Year, and this will be on a Saturday at Riverdale Park 14401 South Stewart from 10 a.m. to 1. Eighth grade and high school students, $5 per class, $70 for an entire 14-week program. 
competition is June the 26th. For more information, contact Recreation Supervisor, 708-849-9853. Or either contact Mr. Bailey at 312-259-2938. I do have flyers and information available to anyone that uh, would like to participate, if you know anyone would like to participate. Also, just a little heads up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I can speak to you about this through true experience. The red light cameras are back up. I received a ticket two weeks ago at 8.35 on a Wednesday night. Yeah. <laughs> they got me. So uh, just preparation, ladies and gentlemen, right up there at uh, Lincoln and uh, Sibley by the White Castle. They have a lot of film in that camera, ladies and gentlemen. And it works. They sent a picture of my dirty vehicle. I thought my license plate was covered up real dirty, but somehow or another, they, they called my numbers out. So um, be cautious, ladies and gentlemen, when you're out there. And actually, there is, it's, it's a safety uh, measure for you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, think safe and drive safe. So it's there. I got a ticket to, to prove it. Uh, end of my report, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Trustee Brown. Trustee Hunt. Um, I just want to, um, this, um, this fiscal year that just passed was really, um, we had a significant loss compared to the year before. A uh, couple of trustees up here didn't agree with the budget, but it was a change of administration, I mean change of trustees and a uh, lost significant amount of money. This budget that's coming up next Monday, highly encourage people that to come, it's very important to come to this meeting. If you're handicapped, I guess you can't come because it's on the second floor. Don't know if that's legal, how they have set that up, but hopefully you'll be able to watch it on video. But um, I would just say pay close attention to the to these numbers and what's coming. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Urban. Next item would be the village administrator's report. And at this point, I have nothing to report, Mayor. And next item would be the corporate bills. I would turn over to Trustee uh, Mohammed. I'd like to make a motion. So I want to make a motion, please, for our corporate payments register number 39, $956,038.85, with a gross payroll of $385,855.38, with Melanie Fitness Center register number 39 at $28,875.65, with a gross payroll of $5,791 dollars and 48 cents with total corporate payments of one million three hundred seventy six thousand five hundred sixty one dollars and thirty six cents you're gonna get a motion I make a motion that we pay the total corporate payments of one million three hundred seventy six thousand five hundred sixty one dollars and thirty six cents is there a second second the motion is seconded to pay the corporate bills in the amount that was stated any discussion um, Yes, um, uh, I stated before, and I just want to uh, restate again, try to make a motion and change it. Um, for about seven months, the one, one employee here at the village has changed their, their biweekly pay week to once a month. Um, one to state that I think that's unfair. I think that one employee should be fair paid on the same pay schedule as, as all of the other uh, employees. Um, some members, some people are here, there's a lot of new people here. Actually, I am, I am talking about the mayor right now who changed his pay rate to once a month. Just, I honestly don't think it's right, so I do want to make a motion, hope, hopefully I can get a second, and can do a roll call vote, that the mayor is on the same pay schedule as all the other employees here at the Village of Dawn. So that, um, that is my motion. Okay, you know, first of all, you said second. a pay raise for the last seven months. No, not pay raise. You have changed your pay cycle. If I'm sorry, if a little, if, um, you, everyone else here at the village of Dawn get paid on a bi-weekly pay schedule. Um, if I say bi-weekly, that's every two weeks. Everyone, he, everyone else here at the village get paid. Right. Um, you um, change your pay cycle to once a month, first day of the month. Um, that so that's just a change. I would try and make the motion. Well, I, I make a motion. Hope I can get a second that the mayor is treated like all other employees and is on a bi-weekly pay schedule. Second. Well, first, first of all, so we're in discussion right now. 
first of all, I'm still getting paid the same amount. I've been getting paid um, probably about seven months is the first of the month. You brought this up la at the last board meeting and was discussed. I don't know what the issue is now, but uh, it was stated that even if all employees got paid once a month, it would cost us less money. So um, I don't understand what's the difference of me getting paid once a month on the first of the month and then getting paid twice a month uh, and I'm getting the same pay. Mayor, can I also add to that Go ahead. Um, to bring some clarity to it? The mayor is not the only one that's getting paid on a monthly basis. We have employees at Melanie Fitness who turned into what we call 10, 1099 or independent contractors who now get paid per month. So it's not just the mayor that's getting on a, a, a monthly um, uh, stipend. It's trainers and instructors who were mm -hmm. once were employees and if we look at the register, we would see that, that there are some that went from employees to independent contractors. Independent contractors are paid on a monthly basis, and that's generally the first week of the month. So it's not just the mayor. Um, just to be a little and, and the other, and the other difference thing, between I, before, 1099 before we go any further, before we go any further. Have businesses might understand this or have a company or been a part of a company. It's a, it's a true difference between a 1099 employee and an employee that were, and an employee. Before we and go any we further. Know, so that's not apples to apples. So before, I, before we I, go any further, apples apples. trustee, the village attorney has reminded me that there is a motion on the floor to approve the corporate bills. And I can make a motion to, and I got a second on my amendment you, for that. There's a motion but I can make and a, a second it to, to approve the corporate bills. And that's what we should respond on. I asked for discussion. You went off on no, and I can make a motion during that discussion. You can't take away. I know no. we have a new attorney here, but you cannot. Take She's away not a my new right. attorney. She's not a new attorney. She's with the same law firm that we have hired as our village attorney. There, and she has reminded me that there is a motion on the floor. It has been seconded, and and I asked for discussion. You went off on a different no, direction. No, that's not true. So. I can make a motion. It's so the attorney's now. T I'm sorry. What you you wasn't in properly introduced. Um, what, what is your what's your name? My name is Judy Coleman. Okay, Attorney uh, Coleman, are you stating right now that I before uh, I've been up here now for two and a half years, actually three years, and before with John, Attorney Murphy, we were able to make a motion to amend the corporate bills. Are you saying it, now it, that I cannot make that motion to make a change my, in it? No, my understanding was because I have a second on my motion too. If, if you're a amending the corporate bills to not approve the mayor's salary that's one thing if you're doing a discussion that you want to revise an ordinance that has nothing to do with the corporate bills that's something else if you're if your motion if you're if your part of the discussion is that you would like to not vote on the mayor's pay that's fine but right now it's before the board to approve the corporate bills. You can you can take a vote saying that you approve everything but the mayor's salary. Uh, otherwise, you know, if another discussion about whether you, you know, whether the mayor should get paid once a month or twice a month would be an entirely different subject and you can bring up the motion afterwards. I'm not saying you can't bring up a motion on that, but right now the motion pending is the approval of the corporate <coughs> bills. Um, I'm just trying to get a little clarity. Um, this was discussion. So, Trustee Hunt, you're discussing. You want to you're discussing this here situation of how the mayor pay is being made. That's that's not part of the approval of the bills, the corporate bills. It's part of. Hey, that, 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 Chief, we, can we get some order? Are we trying to get some clarity? It's, it's not. It's not part of the approval of the corporate bills. It was motioned to pay the bills, and it was motioned seconded to pay the bills. So, uh, and, and the discussion should surround itself around paying the corporate bills, not how many times I get paid. So, okay, but but he's but he's just asked. He, he's asking to uh, discuss. So his discussion can discuss on who's getting paid and how they get paid. My understanding was he made a second. He made a motion, another motion on top of the motion that was pending. 
if he wants to take, he can discuss how the mayor is getting paid, but his vote would be, you know, he can vote for the corporate bills, but for, you know, paying the mayor. I mean, that would be allowed in voting for the corporate bills. But he, I think he brought up a motion, if I'm not mistaken, for an entirely different subject on how many times a month the mayor should be paid. That's the difference. Does that answer your question, Trustee? <laughs> I, I mean, I, honestly, I, I already see the mayor is going to continue to be the only employee here at the building. So I, I just want to state that point out. Wanted to make the change. I truly believe it's not fair. That just that's my. So I'm just wanted to put that out there. That's totally not fair. Again, wanted to be put him back on that. I know. I know it's not going to change. I, I don't have enough votes, and I know. So I, I know it's not going to change. We're just putting that out there. So and. So that's it. Uh, we can, well, I'm going to make sure we pay the bills, but it's just not right. It's not fair. And I want to add, just for the record, Mary Kay, that I agree with Trustee Hunt. I think the mayor should be every two weeks just like everybody else up here on this board. I don't think that um, a vote was even taken when they did decide to make him monthly. I don't think no one should get paid monthly. Everybody should get paid every two weeks. And if I'm not mistaken, um, attorney, we're supposed to stay current to whatever we were sworn into, which is every two weeks. Is that not correct, uh, attorney? We pay all our other bills well, once I, a month. I would have to look at what your ordinance says. Yeah, it says uh, that it follows our term. So if we come in and we got sworn in and we get paid every two weeks, we're supposed to stay every two weeks. Well, you typically the term would be the amount, the salary you get. The salary has to re remain the same during your term. You correct. can't lower it or raise it. Correct. I don't know if there's anything that dictates uh, how many times you get paid. There wasn't, and we reviewed that before the change was made. And you didn't have any authority to do so. Attorney um, advised you of that, and also Mr. Irvin sat here and said that he said that you can do that. And attorney, not attorney, Mr. Irvin do not have authority to do so, to what change a, your pay. What, what attorney said that? Attorney Murphy. Could, I, I disagree with you. I didn't hear that. This was discussed at the last meeting. And I thought it was put to bed, but apparently it hasn't. I'm not making any more money than I earn regularly. And um, for me to get paid once a month, what's the, what's, the, what's the big difference? I mean, I guess it best to differ. What's the difference when you're getting paid once a year? I mean, you can, you can say you want to get paid paid in the beginning of the year. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess it's one person that, that's always interrupting and <clears throat> clapping, but I mean, if you change your pay to once a month, honestly, you can say, you know what, now I want to be paid once a year and get paid the first day you're here. Well, I mean, truly, you could say that the way the things are changing. So that's, this is setting something up later that might not be. Point of order, there's a motion on the floor. We should move the meeting we, forward. We, yeah. Thank you, Trustee Pearson. Okay. Can we take the roll? On the motion to approve the corporate bills for total corporate payments in the amount of one million three hundred and seventy six thousand five hundred and sixty one dollars and thirty six cents. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Hunt. Aye. Trustee Henry. Aye. Motion carries six ayes. Next item would be old business mayor. First item would be A, ordinance number 16-012. It would be approving a final plat of re-subdivision to accommodate Taco Bell's take buying the property located at 1312 Sibley Boulevard. They would be purchasing the eastern half of the property and the sale amount of that is over $400,000 we would end up with the second half of the property to sell. All taxes have been cleared. The, uh, pro pro the project is moving forward to the point that Taco Bell has already submitted site plans for review. We received them today. So I would ask consideration that the board approve the ordinance of plat of resubdivision for 1312 Sibley. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion to approve ordinance number 16-012. Second. A motion and second to approve the ordinance 16-012. That's the approval of the final plan of uh, resubdivision of the, the old Dusty's property, which was formerly the Red Lobster there. It's going to be divided in half. 
and our new business by Taco Bell will be in place before the end of the summer. Um, so um, it's been motioned and seconded. I'd like to get uh, any discussion on this? Yeah, I have a question, man. Okay. Um, how did this come about, meaning the Taco Bell for that location? Like, who approved that um, we want a Taco Bell? I just want to know. Well, I was approached by the Taco Bell developer. I informed the board. There was discussion. No one at that time voiced any displeasure with Taco Bell opening. So we have continued negotiations through my office and Mr. Murphy's office, actually with Ms. Coleman spearheading our end of the legal defense. This has been going on for months at this point. We even brought it before this board because we had to donate the property to the South Suburban Land Bank. If you recall, there were over $600,000 worth of back taxes that needed to be taken care of. There was a formal vote taken by this board to donate the property and continue the sale to Taco Bell. Okay, Mr. Urban, when we donated it to the land bank, my vote was that we get our land back. So did the land bank advocate for the Taco Bell or did you do it on your, on your own? All that the land bank has done is cleaned up the taxes. And it was, it was still our property. They cleaned up property. the taxes and at that point we placed a sign on the property to solicit a purchase of that property. We right. were pro approached by Taco Bell and at every step of the way it's been brought before this board that we were in negotiation to try to bring a new business there. Right. I agree. I'm not, it's no de fight or debate. I'm just asking questions in regards to it because my take was always a sit down restaurant. I am for the Taco Bell so you don't have to go back and forth with me. I'm just saying that I think we need a sit down restaurant in town compared to another fast food okay. restaurant like Olivia's. That's all. Well. If they don't come, we can't drag them here. Right. Well, one thing that we did do was the fact that we we um, <clears throat> we split the property. Taco Bell wanted a little bit more than half the property. They went back to the drawing board because we did not want them to take just a small portion of the other property. Um, initially, we had an offer for six hundred thousand dollars for that property, um, and uh, Taco Bell came through and they paid us. What are they going to pay? What's over four hundred thousand? Four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars for just half of it. So we still uh, are in the in the running to sell the other half at about the same amount that we're selling to Taco Bell, which will come out ahead in regards to the the income that we receive from that property. Also, that would put that property back on the tax rolls, where the village would benefit from it, along with bringing bringing. It, it's going to have some sit down area in that in that uh, facility. Um, so, we're happy to have them on board coming to town. Any for, any further discussion on it? Okay. Is there a motion? We have a motion and a second. Well, we did have a motion. Yeah, we got a motion. Yeah. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Hunt. Aye. Trustee Henry. Aye. Motion carries six eyes. Next item on the agenda would be B, ordinance number 16-013. This is amending Title VI, Motor Vehicles and Traffic Chapter 9, Towing and Impoundment of Hazardous, Unlawful, and Abandoned Vehicles. This was presented by Chief Collins. Um, there have been several attorneys working on this. This is a housekeeping matter, making sure that we, when we do tow cars, we are doing it legally. Is that correct, Chief? Yes, that is. So this has been brought before the board at a cow level, and now we're looking, now that the ordinance has been cleaned up by the legal department and with the help of Clerk Dugan, we'd ask for approval of ordinance number 16013. I'd like to make a motion to approve ordinance number 16-013. Second. Okay, it's been a motion to approve and seconded to approve uh, ordinance number 16-013, amending Title VI Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 9, Towing and Empowerment of Hazardous, Unlawful, and Abandoned Vehicles. Any discussion? Yes, uh, I would like if uh, the Chief can uh, speak on that. For this particular ordinance, um, just an amendment to a certain part of it that would also give us 
the ability to uh, add on an, an administrative tow fee for uh, vehicles that are involved in criminal activity. That's the basic uh, basis of the uh, amendment to it. Jesse Brown. So what's the tow fee on there now? Do you have that number? The ordinance didn't lay out a fee. What this ordinance would do would uh, give the village the ability to add on an administrative fee, basically to pay for the law enforcement services that, um, that the police officers use when we have to deal with criminal activity and tow vehicles. It's basically to reduce the burden on the taxpayers. Okay, well, just, just want to, uh, you know, just want to kind of elaborate on that so the residents understand this ordinance that we're passing. Uh, and if I'm hearing it right, it's if you guys stop someone for any type of illegal substance in their vehicles or whatever may be in there that should be in there, we would be charging up to $500. We would impound it and they would have to pay at least $500 to receive the vehicle back? That's correct, Trustee. He uh, paid five hundred dollars to the village, and then they got to pay the tow truck company. Correct? They have to pay to get their tow, to get their vehicle from the tow. This is strictly an administrative fee to help offset the cost of law enforcement services when we deal with people who are stopped that have uh, illegal guns, drugs, drag racing, littering, and um, the list of the ordinance that I brought up a few weeks ago basically laid out all the criminal activity. Further roll call. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Hunt. Aye. Trustee Henry. Aye. Motion carries six ayes. Next item is item C, ordinance number 16-014, amending Title VI, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 11, immobilization, towing, and impoundment of vehicles for three or more vehicle standing parking compliance automated speed enforcement or automated traffic law violations this was also presented by chief collins at the same time as the previous ordinance was discussed a few weeks ago um, we would ask for your support of ordinance number 16-014 i'd like to make a motion that we accept ordinance 16-014 second the motion is seconded to accept uh, order summer 16-014, amending the title six motor vehicles and traffic, chapter 11, immobilization, towing, and empowerment of vehicles for three or more of a vehicular standing, parking, compliance, automated speed enforcement, or automated traffic law violations. Any discussion? Um, yes, I'm a. Um I just want, I'm gonna have to vote no for this. I'm gonna just state why. Um, I just remember growing up young and could, couldn't get $300 tickets, $300. Sometimes those tickets go up to seven, eight hundred dollars And they told, they told your car and then charge your daily rate. And then all of a sudden you owe $2,000 to get your car to cost you $1,500. And so, and this is stopping, I, I just, I really just, I, I can't approve anything like this. I, I can understand when it's dealing with drugs and criminal activity, but automatic traf traffic lights, going through those lights. I mean, when you go to, to the city, going five miles over the hour is a hundred dollar ticket. It, I just think this is very, um, I, I guess we legally can do it, but I, I feel like it, it would really hurt some of our residents out here in Village of Dawn that's living check to check. And um, so I, I, can't, I can't vote for that. May I elaborate on that, Trustee? No, sorry. Good. Please do. The, um, the proposed amendment would actually put more teeth in the ordinance so that when people who have violated have outstanding fines, we could put, to uh, we could put a boot on their car so we can collect the fines. So with the, all the uncollected uh, fines and uh, penalties, it will just basically stand unless we do something about it. So this ordinance would help us help the police officers and just put boots on cars legally. Are, what about don't we have the um, the state income tax? Did they get state income taxes? Is that still in play? Where we were sent into collection, they have outstanding tickets for Dalton. We actually garnished their income. 
And I bring it up because my dad, they thought it was my tickets, and they garnished his, his. He's a senior, so they garnished his income tax, and he was supposed to get me. So do, do, you, do we still have that in play? or That is in play. This is, as the chief said, putting more teeth for us to collect from people that broke laws. I think that's the thing that we're missing is this is not somebody that's playing hopscotch on a sidewalk. No, yeah, they This is a someone that has broken <coughs> laws repeatedly. And they need to be taught a lesson. You're talking about the red light tickets, not 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 major major crimes. He's talking about parking, maybe an extra five or ten minutes, not paying a parking meter. Now, I don't want you to. Is I mean, to me, it's a difference between that and when you're saying they breaking. They are breaking the law. You're right, but just it's a, it's a difference to me with with that. It's a, it's a distinct difference. Okay, any further? Roll call. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Pearson? Aye. Trustee Stubbs? Aye. Trustee Muhammad? Aye. Trustee Hunt? No. Trustee Henyard? Aye. Motion carry, five ayes. Next item on the agenda is D, awarding of the towing contract that was presented by Chief Collins, last committee of the whole. There was discussion. An RFP went out. Um, Chief Collins is looking for direction from the board as to how they would like to proceed so that we can enter into an agreement with either one, two, or three of the contractors. So we're looking for direction tonight. I'd like to make a motion to approve W&W and w and w towing. Second. It's been motioned <coughs> and seconded to approve WW towing. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to know who the um, chief would recommend um, for the towing contract based upon his um, research and his interviewing and visiting sites. Who does Chief Collins um, recommend? At the last board meeting, I recommended that Airline Towing would be our single tow agency for the village. However, there did seem to be a general consensus that the board would vote to have a rotating basis for the tows. So I guess the question would be, would it be between two or three of the companies that submitted their RFPs? I'll add to that that the rotation, I had conversation with the chief, would not be every other tow. It would be one month the towing company would get all the business. Next month, if there was two, that one would get the business. If there was a third company, that, that's what the pleasure of this board was, third company would get all the business. Then it would go back to the first company. It wouldn't be one tow today, one tow tomorrow, one tow today. It would be a month-to-month -month basis is the rotation. Is that correct, Chief? Yes, that's correct. I got a question. So, Chief, why did you um, pick airline only? As in the uh, last time we had the discussion about it, we are already presently in an agreement with them verbally. We have been doing business with them already, and that uh, we haven't experienced any major problems with this tow agency. So it's basically we're all, we already have them. Let's continue to do business with them. Okay, but you know that they was given that contract without a bid, without going out for bid. So. They didn't even compete with anyone. It was just given to them. Uh, I'm not aware of a contract with them. We were basically under a verbal agreement <coughs> since the uh, contract expired with the last old company. Okay, so we was under that. Don't you think they had the advantage to basically do better than what they're doing now? Because they was they had a foot in the door compared to everybody else that's bidding on it now. I don't believe that would be an advantage. Um, if you had to say it was an advantage is that we have experience with them and they haven't done any bad business with us so far. So what do you like about them? When we, when we call them, they show up. And okay. They and came, the reason I remember when you stated about everyone else, and I'm just going back from the tape, you stated everybody was equal. Can you explain? That's correct. Can you explain? You say everyone was equal. How was everyone equal? Well, not so much as equal. I said no one had uh, a, a distinct advantage over the other. 
And when it came down to the one tow agency, W&W, &W, when we talked about the big wreckers, they didn't have any of the large tow trucks in case we needed it for semis, for accidents or rollovers, but they would call someone else. So and that's, I, that's not an I look in their package, since you brought that up, it said that they're purchasing one. They don't currently have it. Right, but it's in the package. I'm just, I'm just going off what you said. My other question is, did you check with the ICC? No, I did not. Okay, we had that problem last time I asked you that question. It's not a problem. That's not his job. It is his job. Thank you, Trustee it Pearson. Is if he's going to come before the board and suggest that we pick a company, his job is to make sure he's giving us the right information. So that's why I'm asking my questions. So the ICC is what you will check to make sure that everybody's up to date with everything. Did you, did you know that airline um, licenses was revoked? No. Okay, but they currently are a tow company, right? I'm assuming that their license is currently valid at this point. As of April 8th. I call, I check, but that's not my job to do. I just try to check based off of I knew it was coming up. But when I ask you the questions, you don't have the answers for me. So it was revoked. I have it right here. And then also, did you guys know, meaning entire board and resident, that this company is for sale? It is right here. That has no bearing on the police department if it's for sale no, or not. No, no, no. If we find a vote on a tow company, that company is up for sale. Did you know that? So why would we and then that's a matter, that tow company? Trustee, then that's a matter for the board. Right, I know, but I'm saying it to you because you're supplying us with information. You're supplying us with who we should pick. And I'm asking you, did you check more into this company to make sure that we're voting the right way to protect the residents? Trustee, what's the question? My question was, did you check into the company? I it laid out what I did as far as my checks into the company. Okay, I visited so the each company no, and had a conversation with every okay. owner. Okay. Well, that was my stuff and all that's for the record, Mary Kay. Um, exactly what I just said. Question, Chief. If you were to recommend a, um, an alternate towing company, we were talking about, uh, is the term uh, alternate, um, what would that second company be? It would be Wes's Towing. Wes? Wes's towing. Wes's towing. Okay, thank you. So again, why do you say what's wrong with the other company? I'm only asking because it seems to me that that one particular company that you're not choosing had every single thing that you requested of them in their package. That's not true, trustee. It is. I have the package right here. You want me to go down the list? You want me to read it out? You want me to read the whole package out? I got the whole package right here. And residents and anybody that want one, I have the whole entire package from A to Z. That that company, WW, have everything that was required of them. Now, if I go through everybody else's package, because I'm not trying to do that, but I will, a lot of things was missing. Airline, for one, like I just said, license revoked, companies for sale. Why will we approve a company that's for sale? So that means that if he sells the company, the contract goes to another company that we didn't even vet through. So why would we do that? Wes's company, I don't know much about. That's why I'm asking him particular questions. All I saw in here was that they had um, pictures, tons of pictures but not really the information that was required of them. Then you guys stated that you called the state police the last time. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Who's higher up? The sergeant, commander? Just to educate me. Which one is higher up? Depends on what agency we're talking about. Uh, state police. I have no idea what the state police's hierarchy is. Okay. Well, I'm assuming it would be commander. But you guys said that a sergeant was called. Uh, Brian Copo or something like that. So I did call. I tried to find that individual. I tried to do a check in references with everybody. I called everybody's uh, references on here. The only person that gave me phone numbers was W and W Twin. No other company supplied me with a recommendation letter nor a phone number to contact to do a follow up to make sure what they're giving me is valid. Everybody recommended W W Twin. Highly recommended them. I couldn't get a hold of nobody else for airline Twin nor West Twin. So what I'm saying to you is that, Chief, when anybody comes before this board, people should be prepared. You should have all that information for us so that we know what we're voting on and it's legit. If I could add just uh, on that topic, there is no request by the Chief in his RFP to guarantee any of the businesses that they are not going to be for sale at some point. Later on today, we're going to be ta looking at four different companies for insurance. I don't think any of them can guarantee that they're not going to be for sale a week from now if we do business with them. 
that's free enterprise. Whether or not a company is for business, we would address that when the time comes. They have the right to sell, just as West would have the right to sell, anybody would have the right to sell. I think most of the people here, at least most of the people on the board, know that as of a week ago, my wife owned an ice cream shop. As of today, after 25 years, she doesn't own it. But she still has contracts out there, and she's doing business with schools and churches that are going to continue doing it with the new owner. Just because someone is for sale doesn't make them bad. I totally agree, Mr. Urban, but if she already had the contracts out when she sold the business, that's a different story. But right now, this person is coming to get business from us. His company should not be for sale. That means that we will be, in return, dealing with another owner. No, it would mean in the contract that if someone does change ownerships, we would have the right to opt out of that contract, just like with any contract that we have at this point in time with any other vendors. Mr. Herbert, I don't think that was fair. I think you guys should have put that in the package when you supplied the board with that. That's misleading to us, and I, didn't, I don't appreciate that. Secondly, you t you heard about the sale. You need to be checking into his license being revoked. His I did not know about the sale until you said it tonight. Okay, because that means you didn't do your research neither, and you're the minister. I rely you on the chief to do his homework. You know, Everyone should do their trust, research before they come before this board. Trustee Henry. Everyone should. Trustee Henry. Yes, Mayor. Can, can I review the document you said there's a revoke license? You sure can. Okay. Um, secondly, um, secondly, when the contract ran out with GTS, we were under no obligation to continue the services, and we did not put a contract in place. What we did do was take the recommendation of the state police to use airline towing. That's how airline towing got in and uh, start the working relationship with the village. Since that has happened, we haven't had any problems with airline towing. And the chief did what he thought was right in regards to reviewing all the three companies, and um, he made his recommendation. Um, can, I can I review that document? The for sale, you talking about the suspended license? No, I haven't. Oh, you should. Uh, That's the uh, for sale one. Um, where's, where's the replication one you mentioned? Oh, I'll give it to you. I, I, I'll email it to you right now. I want okay. to. Um, so you say right now their license is revoked? <coughs> I'm trying to tell you right now. Can I, can I, get a minute? Okay, on, what was this? <coughs> Last week, Friday, I called. And I spoke to a lady by the name of Shelby. And she stated that their license was revoked. They reapplied on April 8th. That's what I have right here in my notes. Okay. So you guys can call the number like I did. You want the number? 217-782-6171. And that's what I was told. Um, the, the reason um, I, I heard the... Um, the uh, chief recommendation, I know that, uh, some trustees keep asking what's the chief recommendation. His um, his first recommendation that he wrote on, on a paper and gave us a week before the meeting was a rotation between three. Uh, the night of the meeting, he changed his mind and said he just want airline. Um, no fault, people can change their mind. But when I do look at the bid sheet or the sheet that we require each tow, trunky, tow truck tow, uh, company to have, it was a requirement that each tow truck tow company have to come within 20 minutes. Airline stated that it would take them 30 minutes. Um, I thought that should have been one of the things that said, you know what, they eliminated. We did a, um, a bid, everyone put in a bid. When a person don't meet the bid or meet the requirements, and you have two other ones that are meeting the requirements, that should have knocked them off in the beginning. One thing I know about WW, they said they're gonna have a tow truck here, station here. I know that um, the chief, you wrote down that you, they should be here in 20 minutes, and you stood up and said you were allowed 30 minutes. But each, each minute counts when you have a distressed <coughs> car on the street, stopping traffic, and it just makes sense that we can have a tow truck. If this company is going to promise to have a tow truck here, sitting here in the village of Dalton, that can come anytime to pick up, the tow pick up a car and, and do it fast, and same price, same service, and speedier, and all the same quality, it just doesn't even make any type of sense to me to go to another company. So that's why I picked W W W and W Tone, and uh, that's what that's why I'm going for them. Any, 
any further discussion? <clears throat> uh, I'd like to speak on that uh, also. Uh, I'm basically going off the data that was given us by uh, Chief Collins and definitely, uh, your word is definitely good, Chief, uh, but just going by the data and I'm in agreement. I'm looking at t a time factor here because we spoke of earlier about um, vehicles being towed and it's going to be a char $500 charge because that's going to take out time for our police officers to do paperwork so that won't be a, a negative impact to, impact to the residents so that $500 sounds good so we can cover that bill so I'm looking at the time factor here and it was stated that basically all three of the uh, tow company West Towing uh, from Calumet City and WW Towing from Blue Island and uh, airline towing <coughs> from Calumet Park. Um, out of the time frame, uh, airline takes at least a half an hour, which is stated here, and West Towing takes at least 10 minutes. Uh, but it just stood out strong to me that WW Towing will actually have a, a vehicle domiciled here in the village of Dalton. So that means we have this individual uh, 24 hours. And that sounds as though that that company will actually be paying, I don't know how they work, eight hour shifts, so they'll be paying three shifts just to have a person domicile here. I thought that was big of the company t to step out and do that, to show that they really want the business and they really can do the business. So that's why I uh, steered toward the WW towing, cause basically you're saying everything else here, they was really neck to neck in, in this here bid. So in all fairness, uh, you know, in the horse race, you know, you went by nose, and he stuck his nose out there and actually gave up an individual, uh, employee to be here uh, for 24 hours without even leaving. So I, I commend that on him. So um, I'm looking in that direction too to go uh, with WW Tonga. Any further discussion? Roll call. On the motion to approve the proposal by W.W. Towing, motion by Trustee Hunt, second by Trustee Brown. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Pearson? No. Trustee Stubbs? Aye. Trustee Muhammad? No. Trustee Hunt? Aye. Trustee Henner? Aye. Four. Four ayes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, um, Mayor, would be item E. It would be awarding of the lawn care services contract. Ms. Fields presented the document that's in their package uh, regarding lawn care service for abandoned homes and unkept lawns. She also provided a spreadsheet showing the bids that came in. I'll read those right now. There was two categories, for normal cutting and for high grass. Laurel Lee for normal cutting and high grass was $20. D&T was $22 and $40. E. Lopez was $25 for both high and low. BJ Lawn Care was $30 and $30. Fathers and Blessings was $30 and $40. And Castro was $70. <laughs> The request for bids went to every one of the contractors, lawn maintenance contractors that has a license with the village. Out of all of those, and there were well over 50 that were mailed out, the six that returned them are the six that I just mentioned. Currently, we are still using the lawn care service from last year because spring is around, not around the corner, it's here, and the grass is growing. I do know that Ms. Fields and Mr. Stacy met and discussed and proposing that they divide the town into three sections and give the first, second, and third lowest bidder the opportunity to one would get section one, one would get section two, and one would get section three. But ultimately it's up to this board to decide which way they want to move on lawn care maintenance. So we're looking for direction tonight so we can keep the grass cut and mowed in this town. Who was, the was the, who was the vendor last year? Laurel Lee. And how did he do? What type of work? Did, did he do a good job? or Miss Fields? Yeah. He did a good job. Yeah. And he's the lowest bidder. I would like to make a motion to approve 
Laurel Lee and D and T snow plowing for the lawn care contract. Yes, sir. I second that. Okay, it's been motion and seconded to approve the two lawn care services that Trustee Henry recommended. Uh, any discussion? Yes, question. Um, are we talking about two or three? You said three uh, areas. Staff had talked about dividing the town into three, but ultimately the decision is up to this board. I would defer to Mr. Stacy and Ms. Fields. Would that be your formal recommendation to have three, or can you work with two? That was our formal recommendation because it, the mic. we do have over 900 vacant homes, so our recommendation was based on the fact of breaking it up the town into three parts with each one of them providing services for at least 300 homes. Uh, I guess um, my, my question is last year was Larell was he able to um, did we have more than one company last year? Yes we did. We also had fathers and blessings. Last year we have fathers and blessings? Yes. Okay. And fathers and blessings are actually did the best work even though their quote is thirty dollars they actually did the best work and that's only my opinion uh, they're Dalton based company and when you when they go out to a property they did more than just cut the grass they really cleaned the property up and I know that sometimes we say that shouldn't be put on the backs of the residents but those are the people that are gonna call the village hall and complain about more than just grass. They complain about uh, weeds in the back and garbage and branches and, and stuff hanging out of the gutters. And Fathers and Blessings actually did go out and do the best work. Uh, I followed up behind uh, all of the uh, uh, grass cutting companies and some of them left the grass on the lawn after it was cut and without raking it up or picking it up and although the property looked a little better uh, because the grass was cut, you still had the clippings all over the place on the curb and on the sidewalk. And with fathers and blessings, you didn't have that. Um, I know it's a, we have a tendency to go with the cheapest price, but it, cheap is not always the best way to go. Although with 900 houses, it's hard to go above that. Uh, so whatever the board wants to do uh, it is 900 houses we do want to save some money but I would love to see fathers and blessings in there somehow somewhere even if it's on the properties that are, are, are really out of control and, and need the addition and they bought their prices down they, they had priced themselves out of uh, 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 contention uh, last year but they came down with the prices and the thing is that they're putting people to work and trying to teach some skills to people who need jobs and they are actually when I, when they leave a property it looks like it was maintained uh, trustee person I guess um right now they're 33 and, and I like fathers and bless I see them all the time but right now they're 33 percent higher than our lowest bid you said last year there was even higher what, what was what were they charging last year I don't know what they were charging I just know that they bought down the price down and they they still 33% higher yes. right now. So last year, were they 50% higher? Uh, you'd have to ask Denise. We'd have to pull their invoices, but they were higher. But they, they came down this year to 33%. They lowered it down, yes. To 33%. The difference that last year, what Fathers and Blessings was doing was not just cutting the grass. They went in and maintained the evergreens, the bushes, the low-hanging branches. That is something that Ms. Fields and Mr. Stacy have in the RFP is this is just strictly grass cutting. If we want additional work done, they will then allocate it to be done. Before last year, some of the, some of the work that was done was not technically authorized. But as Trustee Pearson said, it looked good. Yes, we paid the bill. But in that respect, it was higher that way because they did more than what they should have been doing. Well, I, I concur with um, 
Trustee Pearson, I think we should uh, have three based on a re recommendation of the two department two department heads. If you got a, a 900 homes, is it 900 vacant properties we're talking yeah. about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, I, I would recommend a third one, which would be um, fathers and blessings, along with the first two that the um, trustees um, voted on. I too um, would like to see uh, fathers and blessings. Not only do they cut the grass, but they place the grass in brown paper bags and put them on the street, as opposed to just leaving the grass laying on top of the grass so the grass can die. So I concur with Trustee Muhammad and Trustee Pearson. Can we ask the trustees to amend their motion to include um, three contractors instead of the two? I, I'd like to weigh in on that. Um, so the first two, uh, Lee and D and T, they're just actually just cutting grass and nothing else. And Father and Blessing, they're cutting grass and trimming bushes. Just, just grass. Just grass. Unless they get permission, they go for any of them to go over and above. Normally, what they do they will take a photograph and bring it in and show us what the before and the after and I think fathers and blessings included theirs in their package and before we they do anything they have to get an okay if the grass is real high last year uh, the grass was extremely high this year they started on it and caught it before the grass started getting high due to all the rain that we had last year. So, um, and, and with that being said, I, you know, I actually managed the Thorn Lawn Care Service, so I understand about that high growing grass. I watch the weather like a weatherman now. So, uh, <laughs> that grass gets green and long. That's, that's a definite. Um, I like to respect uh, the housing of uh, Denise. Uh, you're saying you guys had, you had we, not, we cut up in three different areas, and we did we had three different uh, landscapes last year? No, we only had two. We only had two? We have the same. That was something that Public Works looked at this year, breaking the village up into three parts. We didn't do that last year. Okay, so you and Public Works, you guys are actually asking for a wish list, trying to get three instead of two, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> For one, I understand that grass growing like that, and, and, and it is a tough job. Uh, but I just wish that, you know, Father, blessings can kind of bless us and <laughs> come on down a little bit. Seeing that you guys did go all out on uh, the call of duty last year, because uh, I do believe in rewarding individuals that's there with you when the, when the thick is thick. Um, Father and blessing is asked for $30. If we can just get blessed to get Somewhere on the twenty-five dollars. Twenty-three ninety-nine or something like that. Just I would suggest if you, you know, let me finish this, Mr. Irvin. I'm, I'm just trying to get get a little. Well, I'm trying to work with Father and Bless. Mr. Irvin, I'm talking right now, Mr. Irvin. I'm, I'm I'm trying to negotiate because I was addressed by a trustee was saying could we renegotiate this? So that's what I'm working on. Can I get other trustee Muhammad some respect on that? Thank you. So that's all I'm asking <clears throat> because I'm pretty sure I can be persuaded to go in that direction. Um, and I know cheap is not always good. So that means if you're good and you got that heart of gold that you can come on down a little bit and get up on that 25, I'm more than certain I'm pretty sure I can go in that direction, sir. <laughs> I appreciate you, sir. Any further discussion? Yeah, I just want a clarity of what's the consensus of what everybody's trying to do. Just add a third company, or we want to keep it at two and just have uh, Fathers and Blessings and Laurel uh, as the cutting company. I would do the three. Um, for Trustee Muhammad, I'm saying just add uh, um, Fathers and Blessings to the two that you both made the motion for. And that's what I would like to see three we're, we're, we're fire and blessing at $25 cut rate I would like to see three also because 900 houses is a lot of houses to maintain 
Okay, I don't have a problem with that. We can do three, but I just want to point out that we are booting the other people that was lower than fathers and blessings. So I just want that for the record that I'll go with it, but we just cutting out the other company just to be fair. Because the other company was at 23? 25. 25. 25. So you're going to meet them at 25, is that correct? All right. You want to meet them? And, and, and to remind, uh, we're not in the grass cut business now. We, <laughs> let's not get there that we got to keep hiring all these grass cutters because that means we need to put more pressure on these banks that own these here home. So we just really kind of putting a little band-aid on a big cut. So we definitely not in the grass cutting business. And Trustee Henry, you are, you are correct. Um, the right thing, my opinion, the right thing to do, and I know this is throwing a wrench in it, would be to have four because I don't see how we cannot include a company that did no. it lower. <laughs> three, three is good enough. I, I want everybody know. to be able to make money. They, they run a business, so you add more and more, and that's less income for that business to make money. Um, and then for the record, I would like to add that please do not call anyone else. I don't know if it's Denise, Mr. Urban, or the mayor. Uh, once we the pick mayor. these three companies, Please stick to those three companies and don't ask someone else so they all can get their fair share of income for their business. Thank you. I'm good with it. Yeah, I, I'd like to amend that motion to add uh, Fathers and Blessings at $25. Second. Well, it was already second. Yeah. Yeah. Second. Okay. No further discussion. Oh, uh, Mayor. Uh, and also, we uh, we gonna the high grass, so we gonna come down about five dollars off of that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> come on, Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker, please, sir. Come on. You got a big heart. I know it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, do I need to amend that, Mary Kay? Oh, I gotta get a blessing, man. Mary Kay, do I need to amend that motion again, or is it fine the way it is? Well, the motion right now, as amended, is to approve Laurel Lee, D and T, and Fathers and Blessings at twenty dollars, twenty-two dollars, and twenty-five dollars, respectively. Not dealing with the high grass. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call. Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Pearson? Aye. Trustee Stubbs? Aye. Trustee Muhammad? Aye. Trustee Hunt? Aye. Trustee Henry? Aye. Motion carries as amended, correct? Yes. Okay, Mr. Sturman. Next item would be new business, a proposal for rezoning the property is the Alamar Plaza, located at 15401 Cottage Grove Avenue. The petitioner is Mr. Demetrius Walker, who represents Fathers and Blessings, who is going to be renting a spot from the owner of the strip center. The front part of the location will be a thrift store, which will generate sales tax. It is also a retail business. The property is currently zoned retail sales only. In the second half of the property, the back half, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Walker, he wants to open, for lack of better words, a training or a school to train people to learn the crafts and get jobs. That would not fit the zoning, so he's asking for a variance to the zoning ordinance for that one particular piece of property that he will be renting. <coughs> staff is recommending the rezoning. It's a non-issue in staff's opinion. He is also in the document that he presented, which is in your packet, is asking for a contribution from the village of $50,000 <coughs> and potentially a piece of property so that he could further expand his due diligence on training people to get work. 
staff recommends the issuance of the rezoning for that property staff does not recommend the fifty thousand dollars or donating a piece of property the sole reason for that is if we do it for one non-for-profit we're opening up our doors for every non-for-profit to come and knock on our doors and ask for fifty thousand dollars mr. D Walker is here to answer any questions good afternoon uh, village of Dalton Board of Trustees uh, Mayor Rogers and constituents of Dalton um, first and foremost um, we are greatly appreciative of the collaboration of partnership between uh, fab and the village of Dalton uh, we've been out here in the community uh, doing great work with partnering with the village of Dalton um, in different areas as far as uh, catering to uh, our young people uh, involving ourselves with our seniors beautifying our community and we're doing this under our affordable housing program where we are housing different veterans homeless uh, mentally challenged disabled individuals and what we do is we run them through a skills program that we created a curriculum it's called developmental skills and training program uh, we've been very successful at it uh, in this first year that we have been launched our program um, as you could tell we've brought a facility in Dalton to house our guys we are also opening up a thrift store um, to try to bring in job training opportunities um, a lot of these kids and individuals in our community don't have the skills what it takes to hold a job our organization is here to train and give the certification that's needed to give the ability for change. I know that we're proposing that every number profit may have the door open as to coming in, but we're figuring that our CARES program, which is a center for academic resources and empowerment of success, CARES for Dalton. In that CARES program, um, we've done a lot of research on Dalton. And um, the statistics we come up is that we're steadily increasing our unemployment rates. Uh, we significantly are low on higher education uh, by attainable rates. We are deficient in both labor and soft skills. And we are high poverty rates. That's the research we've done on Dalton. What we're opposing is that the community allows us to come in with our staffing of qualified individuals to teach different soft skills in um, culinary, uh, business management, entrepreneurship. Um, it goes on and on from our traits that we are able to certify these young men and women in. Also, we are able to bring together a community as a one. There are things that we can do for our community as a non for profit and services that we provide as though food pantry we're going to be trying to bring our food pantry to this location also a computer lab to teach individuals the things that they need in IT 101 there are a lot of different programs that we're looking to bring in and remember fifty thousand dollars cannot 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 finish a program like this that's just a start the rest we have other entities and ways that we're going to be planning on doing fundraising events community events and don't forget again everything the fathers and blessings does for this community and our cares program is donated back to our community so that means all the services that are giving is given right back to the community that means we're going to help rebuild we're going to help revitalize we're going to help with the urban gardens we're going to help with a lot of movements that we've already been involved in so the position of a property being donated well hey we're self-investments here uh, we're not funded by the state or anyone. This has all been a young man's dream through what I'm the founder and CEO. And God gave me a vision, and I've been standing on it. So at this point, having the ability for help and support is something that we've been doing already in front of everyone for a year and a half off our own funds is not, I would think, not over asking for the ability for the community to come in and help on something that's going to help the community. Any questions? Do you have, uh, I guess, one question? I, uh, th and thank you for the presentation coming up, um, presenting. Do you have a, a bio um, about more about what, who, who is Father and Blessings? Um, I see in packages not, not like when it was established, um, what, 
what have you um have you opened up something like this before if you can speak on that right now this work facility if you had a thrift sure. I, I just don't know too much in this packet it's not too much history about who exactly is fire and blessing when it was established um i, I just i mean well let me give you a little history thing about who is no fire problem no problem trustee hunt uh, Fathers and Blessings was established in 2014 of August. Um, it was created from my own home. We, I had a home on 7922 South of that I lived in, that I opened my doors to for this program. I started working in this field in about 2005. We started with the Mother's House. It's a program that's going on in the city of Chicago where we're housing right now 60 individuals. So I started with affiliate of that program. And what we did was branched off there to create a developmental skills and training curriculum that actually can teach and certify different individuals and bring the community revitalization and different education to support our community. So ever since 2014, we have been established throughout the city of Chicago and in the South Suburbs. Any other questions? Uh, I don't have any right now. Okay. Any other questions? Community? How many guys in the program now and where is the house? Well, currently we house 10 individuals and we're right here on 14728 Chicago Road. Now, um, um, you was on the agenda for presentation, but you're not allowed to open it up to the floor. Okay, I do apologize. Yes, yes sir. So, well, any questions uh, from any questions trustees from the board? Boards? Um, you said in the front of it is going to be a resale shop in this particular building, 1541 Cottage Grove, in that strip mall there. You're saying the other half that's in the back, there's going to be a training facility for is it, the doors open to whom? Men, women, boys, girls? Men, women, children. Uh, we have a mentorship program that we're bringing in and we're going to be uniting, uh, reaching out to the local high schools. Uh, in our educational field. Um, we're utilizing the back of our store at this time to implement the program uh, until the Village of Dalton and trustees, we can make accommodations to maybe donating us a building. We're utilizing our facility that we have funded. And you'll be trained as far as what, what type of curriculum? Well, I mean, there's, we have a vast of curriculum that we're gonna be training in. Um, Building construction trades, building maintenance, repair, um, hands-on classes covering basic plumbing, electrical, carpentry, skills in, uh, used in industries. Uh, we're going to be doing building maintenance and repair, uh, flooring and covering, flooring and covering part two, um, oasis training, uh, restaurant development, design and operational management, culinary coursework beginners, immediate and professional food safety and sanitation sanitation, managing restaurant one-on-one -on -one coursework, including basic finances, marquee restaurant development and design. Um, we're going to be doing construction work. So we have a, a vast of curriculum that we will have offered to our community and the surrounding communities in our soft suburban areas. Because I know that is a retail strip mall. Correct. And is this uh, okay through, I guess, who you're leasing it from? They know what you're basically bringing in there? Yes, sir. I've definitely been in contact with our landlord, and he is totally supportive of what we're doing. That wouldn't happen to be Mr. Robinson, would it? Jim? Robinson? His last name, Robinson? Uh, I, Mr. Jim Robinson, I believe so. Um, we refer to him as 154-1 Trust. <laughs> Okay, so I know you guys must have had a conversation, actually had a conversation with him also, and he was saying he's strictly retail there, so it didn't seem as though he knew anything about the training. Well, he does. Um, I think the village and everyone's concern was whether we were going to make this facility uh, overnight stay, and that's totally unacceptable. This is not what this facility will be utilized in. Their concerns was whether we were going to have individuals staying overnight or some type of housing program in there. That's not what this location is for. Okay, because right across the street we have a Catholic grammar school. Correct, and we have the high school. Corner, corner. We have corner. Thornbridge High School. So yes, sir. yeah, that is a concern that. We don't look to have those type of visitors there and you're saying stay overnight. So it's going to be training up until 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, something to that effect. Normal hours, of course, 9 to 5 hours. So they come for training, they go home. No sleeping. No sleeping, no plan, no loving. 
<laughs> Mr. Walker, question for you. <laughs> I mean, that's simple. Yes, yeah, absolutely. No sleep. Mr. Walker, America. question for you. Absolutely, Mr. Would Mark. you be able to do all that you've listed without the five fifty thousand dollars Would you be able to accomplish all of that? I mean, that's a question of integrity. I mean, how I, I think nothing can be done by itself without help. Um, if this is a village, if this is a community, if we're all in this together, uh, just like I've heard the trustee, forgive me on the board, you guys are proposing a community center that you've requested $80,000 for from this village. I'm thinking that that's somewhere in comparability. Could you open a community center without that $80,000? So we're both on the same level of need. There is a need for this. Well, I, I don't want to, you know, disagree with you. I, I hate to disagree with you, but the, um, the youth center is a property of the village of Dalton, and you're a non-for-profit who wants a grant from another non-for-profit, quotes, mm -hmm. of $50,000. That youth center would be part of the budget of, of uh, the village of Dalton. So it's two separate things. My question is, um, without the $50,000, could you accomplish everything that you listed in your presentation? Without the $50,000, could I accomplish everything in my presentation? As fathers and blessings, we would have to answer yes because we stand beyond the factors of being held back. So we would push different fundraisers, different efforts to raise this money to make this accommodation happen. And as of a reply to your um, the difference in severities as a community center that is owned by the village of Dalton and us being a non for profit. The advantage that we have as a non for profit, we are allowed to write on behalf of a federal level to receive grants for this village of Dalton. So, in reform of us working together as a united connection, we will actually be able to bring in income and revenue into the village of Dalton for some of the programs that we would be writing for. Okay, let, let me go on the record. I, I agree with you 100% in what you're doing. Uh, but now you just said that you can get monies for us and for you. Is that, did I understand that we, just we're, now? We're, we're going to get this correct. We're going to get money for our community. Okay, but if you're saying you can get money for your commu the commu our community, mm -hmm. and so you can get $50,000 outside of the village of Dalton? No, I'm asking the village of Dalton to participate in the movement of bringing cares to this village to help our community grow and unite in the way it's supposed to. Is that a hard question of asking? I'm not sure. Okay, again, I'm with you 100% and, and just speak so it, we can go on the record. Um, there was much resistance on this board for this youth center, mm -hmm. even the $80,000. There are some here who feel that's too much. They voiced that. So I understand the resistance that you get, and I'm with you 100%. My concern is, again, to get with you to help come up with those funds. I couldn't tell you right now if we have 50000 to give because, as you can see, the monies that we pay on a monthly basis uh, to pay bills. So I'm with you 100%. I think we need to sit down and see how we can come up with the $50,000 because i like to see us come together with the 80000 plus that we need for the uh, Dalton Youth Center. Well, we've, I've talked to... Uh, Mr. Irvin, and, uh, um, and informed that we tried to send over a packet which we relate to add to the agenda. We are registered with the Attorney General's office as being a not-for-profit charitable organization. So we said, why don't we organize bucket drives in our community that allows us to raise money and reach off the back of our communities and surrounding communities to try to raise these funds and other different fundraisers for this cause. Like I said, I'm with you 100%. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, when will the thrift store be open? Uh, we're pushing for a soft opening maybe the second week of May. We just actually got approved for our business license. Thank you very much. So our permit is in. Now we're just looking and reaching out for the rezoning so we can start the process of getting the education and the help to the community. And I guess my um, question would be, um, and it's, it, it kind of, I'm trying to see who's going to be in there. You, you said from high schoolers to adults. Or are you going to be targeting high school students? Are you going to be, can anybody, like, kind of trying to see what's your business model? Who are you actually trying to target? It seems like it's very broad right now. Just trying to see, is it a niche or who are you trying to target to improve? Um, a lot of high schools already have a lot of those programs right now at the high school program. They, they uh, teach them how to do computers. Some some high schools can teach, probably can teach the class to teach the people how to do the computers and stuff. So just trying to see how do you in, in, envision 
the program, the target, who are you trying to, who are you trying to help? Uh, Fathers and Blessings was created to help whoever needs help. Uh, we're starting from our kids to our adults to our seniors. We are non-for-profit. We're reaching out to whoever needs our help. Our store is going to bring hands-on experience. That means the kids actually get to perform in the actual retail store of learning how to stock, learning how to budget, learning how to work a cash machine, learning how to do customer service, dealing with actual clients. Also, all of our programs are hand-on learning skills trait. So you actually experience while you're learning. Um, I kind of didn't really answer my, that's okay though. That's, well, that's okay. I, I want to answer your question, so make sure I'm, I'm, I'm able to, Mr. Hunt. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you, Mr. White. Are you guys oh. in need of a um, property? Oh, we're absolutely in need of a property. So did you um, talk to Mr. Urban or the mayor in regards to village-owned property we have? Well, we were told that there are any properties available, that the village doesn't own any properties, and the village doesn't have Since any properties. We own property. We own Comcast building right here on Chicago Road. Well, I'm, the I'm, needs, I'm sorry, Trustee Hunt. The needs own. that were expressed to me... The properties that we own did not fill those needs. So yes, I did tell them we had a lot of vacant property, but when it came to the type of property for training, the properties that we did have did not fit his needs. So why do you say that? Why do you say it don't fit his needs? Because need? of his qualifications, what he gave to me. Which is, you need a building to staff for training, correct? Correct. Comcast building be perfect. Comcast building was recommended to be demolished because of the damage that it sustained from the auto accident. Well, the roof is caved in and it's 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 not in rehabable uh, condition. It plus uh, throughout the whole facility is filled with mold. That's like everything else we sell, Mayor. We sold properties that has mold and they fixed them, right? It's back on the tax roll, right? You, 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 so want, you, again, want, you want us to I give a property, you, an unsafe piece of property to a non profit that's gonna have people in it. Yes. And take the risk of that, that property. Yes, I do. And you know, let me explain well, why. Because I don't like how you sit here and try to uh, make people believe it's unsafe. Unsafe, I Mr. do real Engineer, estate for a living. Hold Mr. on. Mr. Engineer, did you go in that building? Living. So if you want to buy a property, we want property that's abandoned, um, got mold, roof cave in, whatever. And you're going to fix it. Correct. So you should go look at these properties and judge it for yourself if, is, if it's feasible for you. That's what I would do. I agree, Trustee. But I'm just trying to let you know, we do own property, the village does, and I think you should go check them out. So I whoever advising you, they're telling you wrong. We own property. I would love a list of properties that the village may have in possession that we may be able to get donated for our calls and our training facilities. All right. Mayor, it's, uh, it's my understanding that the structural, structural integrity of our building has been compromised. Good. It's my understanding that the Comcast building, the structural integrity has been compromised and it's um, not feasible for rehab. That's my understanding, Mayor. Thank you. Just make sure you get a list. I don't Thank know, you, Mr. Mr. Urban, do you get him that list or how do we get this list of property that we own so he can have a clear understanding? Ms. Fields and I will work on a list. We'll get it to him no later than next week, Monday. There you have it. Thank you very much for saying that. You want to include board. vacant property, Mr. Walker, also? Because we own a lot of vacant property. I, I would love it. Fine. It's for affordable housing. Thank you very much, community. Okay, Thank and, you and one, one more other thing. We're talking on here rezoning. So it's still going to be a retail facility because it's in the strip mall. Then there's, you want to bring training. So is that more or less like an add on? That is considered a secondary business under the same roof, which it's not zoned for currently. Okay. So what are we looking for tonight? A motion for rezoning? The petitioner is looking for a motion for rezoning, donation of $50,000, and a property to be named in the future. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with rezoning. Uh, I'm not okay with the $50,000 because we do not have $50,000 from what I see. I don't know what everybody else looks at, but from what I see, the village does not have $50,000. I'm in favor of the program. Uh, I did go by and take a look at uh, the facility. He, uh, I received a call and was asked to stop by, and I, I, I like what I see. 
I'm definitely in favor of what they're doing over there. Uh, but I just don't think we have uh, the money to, to put $50,000 out there like that. And it also does open a door for other non-for-profits to come in and say, hey, you gave it to them. We want to work in your community also, and we need you to give us some startup money. Uh, as far as the property is concerned, I don't know all the properties that we have. Maybe I should, but I don't know all the properties that we have. Uh, but uh, I'm sure willing to take a look at it and see what we could do if there's something out there that we could do. Because that idea is great, what, what you're looking at doing. So is it right to say you want to wait till you look at the other properties before we say we want to rezone? If the board doesn't move forward on the rezoning, he cannot open the secondary portion of his business until the rezoning is done on that piece of property. But he can open up the retail part. He can open up the retail, correct, sir. So with that being said, in the meantime, you can be looking at other properties to do the training in. Correct. And at the same time, we have a certain amount of limit uh, of time available to do our food pantry. Um, so we're, we're, we're in uh, talking right now uh, to put the food pantry in a, a side of uh, the back of the uh, retail store. So does the zoning allow the food pantry there too, or is that something separate? That it would be a special zoning, special use zoning as is stated on the synopsis sheet. Yes, it would so, allow it. So why don't we, we don't have a zoning committee. I think you should be, go before the zoning committee in regards to this. We don't. So that is through. Even with a zoning commission, there would be a presentation made by the petitioner. The zoning commission only makes recommendations. Ultimately, it ends up at this board level to be voted on. Mm -hmm. so I agree. That's what I'm saying. I think it still should go before zoning committee to be vetted through. That way, you know everything. Because all us up here, we never had a zoning committee at all. So we don't even know what is on for you B2, B3, B4. We don't know. So I'm just telling you, I think you should go before a zoning committee. Um, my, oh, uh, my opinion, I think it's a great idea to, to, to work fair, I mean, to work, work, work training, uh, putting a food pantry there, um, and a thrift store. But just right now, I, I really I would like to see more different zoning areas. Is that the best spot for that food pantry right there in that work? work training facility. I'm not sure that's the best location in Dalton for that right now. Um, I'm kind of worried about what, I mean, because I'm thinking the church might already do the food pantry right there. Are you going, does that church, that church right there already do a food pantry? We actually probably have enough, not to say we don't, you never have enough food pantries, but I mean, it's a food pantry probably right across the street from that place that can probably do that serving what you want to do now. I didn't know it was a food pantry in this. Um, I just would like to really spend more time looking at this, coming together, trying to figure out another location, a better location for it. Well, ourselves. once again, Trustee Hunt, um, we are self-funded, so that was an obligation that Fathers and Blessings chose to pay uh, to facilitate this program. Now, if once again, if the Village of Dalton and trustees would like to donate us a property and allow us an area that we can move forward with this project, I'm well for it but until then we still have a project that needs to move forward to service our community the food pantry and not just the food pantry the whole synonym of the program yeah I didn't know about that what days would the food pantry be open what days you that's, serve? I mean that's not that's not into food. that's not even into so it's right not now food we're, pantry? We're, right now my main concern is just even seeing if we can get it rezoned to even teach someone or even have the community efforts of giving so the zoning would not allow the, the food pantry to or what I mean I'm stand mr. urban I mean it, I the zoning, special use zoning, would allow for business type activities other than retail. So the, the things that he's talking about, a food pantry, education, training, would all be okay to be done in that building. It would be technically a special use rezoning ordinance. Does, does that hurt our village? Buy as much food as we can provide? 
or does that make us a better community by feeding everyone? <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Is that Walker, it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can go into further detail in regards to, um, you know, how you want to expand and how you want to operate. I think the question here before this board is um, the three things that you wanted to, to find out. The approval of the re rezoning, the donation of the fifty thousand dollars, and and or any further donation of any property. Um, do we <clears throat> take the vote on all three things, or is there something that the board want to separate? Or I think we should motion to send it to zoning. Well, I would like to make a motion to send this to um, zoning committee. Well, we don't have a zoning committee. That's the problem. So and how just, can we, so that's and just what as and just as Mr. Urban has said, that regardless whether we had the zoning committee or not, it still would be brought before this board, right? Based upon a recommendation, if we had a zoning committee, exactly. But and that gives us the opportunity to vet this through and find and different and avenues for him. I and just and think it should go before committee. And and this board will still make the ultimate decision. So if if this board is not comfortable with the three items that have been presented, then maybe there should be a motion to amend the the, um, uh, uh, the thing that's on the floor here right now. So um, just as you amended other things earlier tonight. Excuse I, me, attorney, uh, is it Coleman? Coleman? Coleman. How do I motion that to make a zoning uh, committee and to send it to zoning committee? What do I, what, what would I say? How does it go? I would like to make a motion, uh, trustee, okay. that we take out the $50,000 and rezone it along with looking into giving them the property at a later date. It's not rezoning. What? We don't have a property yet. We don't have one yet. You said he was going to look. You said uh, we had some. I'm fine, I'm fine with giving them a problem. I don't have a problem with that. But the rezoning is what I have a problem with. I think it should go to some form of committee. Like, what are we rezoning? Uh, we rezoning someone else's land. We should ask the owner them about that. That's what I'm saying. I think it should get better I'm a, through. Well, that's my vote. Where is the, where is the I guess, do we have a copy of the, the new official zoning? How does it? No, we don't have anything. That's why you need to go to zoning. So the ordinance to approve the zoning or a res I mean, I guess the Lord stepped out. But I mean, would she have an ordinance to pass to do the zoning? Would it do a resolution need to be passed to change it? I would think a resolution or ordinance would need to be presented to us to to change that. That that would, but I mean that would be Attorney Coleman to let us know if we need an ordinance or at least a resolution to change the ordinance, like to change yeah, the no, um, no. Um, so Mr. I guess Walker. that's for Attorney Coleman. Mr. Walker, um, you need the zoning variance change for the second half, right? Correct. So can you operate the first half now? Absolutely. Okay. I would make a recommendation that we um, table this, this portion, mm -hmm. allow us to try to <coughs> modify it. No problem, man. And then you, you, you operate the first half. And then we would um, modify and, and present it to this board, whether it's through a special meeting and or, in fact, uh, put a committee in place for the, for the zoning half. And we're looking, maybe we can expedite that and get it done within two weeks when the next board meeting come up. Sounds good, Mayor. Okay. All right. Um, is there a motion to table this right now so we can get further discussion on this to have this? Motion to table it. Second. Second. Okay, it's been motion to table, second it. In any further discussion? Okay, there's no discussion on table. Roll call. Trustee Brown. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Hunt. Aye. Trustee Henier. Aye. Motion carries six eyes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is item B under new business interview potential insurance brokers of record. There are four companies will, wishing to present and be interviewed by the board. <coughs> Prior to this meeting starting this evening, Ms. Janice Johnson held a 
draw the straw to see who would go first because everybody wants to be first, second, third, fourth. So the order that we will be hearing these folks is the Horton Group would be number one, Insure Source would be number two, Mesero would be number three, and Gallagher would be number four. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, you would step up to the podium. You will have 10 minutes each to make your presentation, and then the board can ask any questions. Uh, I have a, a question before we even start. <coughs> um, who is, uh, well, I know that Bill uh, Owens Group is the current brokers. Can I just get, um, are we going to be, I know it would be our third year doing broker insurance. Are we now going to be doing a new broker insurance every year now? Or why, why did, why, who would have to answer why we're we well, putting this out? I like attempted this? to take it out last year uh, when Vassal had it, and I was told that I had no right to do that. Do I think insurance should be looked at every year? I can tell you from a personal standpoint, yes, I review my insurance policies of my brokers with my businesses and my personals every year to see where and who is the best and what is my best value. So yes, I think it should be at least interviewed. That's what we're looking at to see, is there something better than what we have now out there? So every year we're gonna be listening to five different insurance companies every that year? That would be my recommendation, yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'd like to first take a take the time um, to. Hey, is that my? Testing, 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 testing. We're good. Two eye. So first, I'd like to say thank you to the mayor, to the board, to staff, uh, to the residents uh, for allowing us to come and speak. Uh, my name is Kelly Fox, and I'm representing the Horton Group. A little bit about the Horton Group: been around since 1971, over 350 employees. Uh, we insure over 800 municipalities in three states. Um, listen, the objective tonight, in my opinion, is relatively straightforward, right? It comes down to three things. Capability and capacity, personal investment, and trust. So size and scale of the firm that you choose, it absolutely does matter. But in my opinion, the right size is key, right? So. I mean, so for instance, you can have a really large firm and in my opinion what happens and in my experience what happens is that you call in and you get a team. You get some faceless person, something like that. And, and some faceless person like that. But for me, you know, the size of my firm, you have my cell phone number, you, you know the people in my firm, you can contact me directly anytime for any issues, anything like that, right? So you can also have a smaller firm, but the problem with the smaller firm, in my opinion, in my experience, is that they have to partner up with a larger firm to get the thing done. And in my opinion, why not just hire the larger firm in, to begin with? So now, with regard to your insurance program now, we can absolutely solve some of the immediate problems. Like so, for instance, I think your property rate's a little high. You know, I think that you could be marketed a little bit better into broader range of companies. But that's not the real issue in my opinion. The real issue here is continuous improvement. So evaluation of the claim of the village's claim history is something that you need to address. So from a claims perspective, right? And you establish special uh, handling guidelines with your current TPA, which is a third party claims administrator. Quarterly claim reviews, and you need to also be able to have someone that speaks the language. And so for me, I'm a former underwriter and a former claims person before I came to the brokerage side. And I can tell you from the desk level, it's critical that you have somebody that speaks the language because I'll give you an example. So sometimes brokers would call me when I was a claim rep and they would explain to me why a claim, certain claim needed to be covered or why a certain claim needed to be looked at a certain way. And they were able to speak the language to me that fills in the gray area in a policy where it allows you to be able to cover a claim, whereas maybe someone else wouldn't know that 
that lingo. Um, as far as coverage evaluation, you need to be able to know how to get the best rates. You need, you need long-term relationships with underwriters so that you can, you know, have a sense of the relationship and you can have a sense of where they're going to be and have a broad range of companies that you can go to. Um, you need to have a cost-benefit analysis with regard to your retentions. So sometimes it's a, a good idea to have, you know, a high retention. Sometimes it's a good idea to have a low retention. But there's really no way to know that until you have a full assessment, which actually brings me to my next point, safety and loss prevention. So you need an expert that can come in to the village and provide a full assessment of all of your programs. Everything, all the coverages, bless you, all of the coverages, all of the liability, all of the risks that you have. That might start with a survey. So how would you know what your employees or what's going on in the village unless you ask them? It might happen, it might involve something called, that we do call an accident review board. So what happens in there is that when an incident happens in the village, you get all of the relevant parties together. So you may have trustees, you may have supervisors, and you get everybody in a room, and then you get the employee in the room, and you basically ask them what happened. And what you'll find out is that there are really simple fixes for things that happen. So for instance, in another municipality, one of the things that happened was that a, a fire, one of the doors for the fire department's uh, uh, facility came down. The springs broke and it came down and it slammed down and destroyed the door. No one was hurt, but then a discussion began about how to create a no standing zone, right? So that was something that came out of that accident review board that potentially could save somebody, you know, being hurt or killed. So I think that that's something that's also a really good, a really good thing. But from my perspective, from Horton's perspective, the thing that's most important is the culture of safety. And what happens is, is that from the top down, you have to get people thinking about how to do things safely. So say you assign someone a task, go cut tree limbs, go you know, pay, or fill in a pothole or whatever it is, that employee is only thinking about completing the job, right? So what you want them to do is start thinking about, am I doing it safely? Am I putting myself or someone else in harm's way? And what you do then is uh, the employees then begin to talk because it creates a culture of safety if you have them thinking about doing these things safely. And also, your claims begin to trend down, and that's where you can realize savings uh, in your premiums. You also need an annual safety plan. And in your annual safety plan, so say, for example, the first year you may have a safety expert come out about 10 times, but as time goes on, your losses trend down, and you sort of wrap your arms around what the issues are, the, those visits get less and less. And then, uh, so the second point that I'll bring up is personal investment. So for me, I am an African American man serving a, a customer base that is largely filled with people of color. And I don't apologize for, for that. And I am unapologetically black, right? And so what I feel is that the needs of the communities that I serve are more personal to me. And, and I care about the communities that I serve. But I'm not just that, I'm also an insurance professional. I've been doing insurance for 16 years. Before I came here, I was with the Travelers, which is a Fortune 100 company. And before that, I was a claims professional. And so I've been at every level of the insurance purchasing uh, uh, stage. And also, I've handled municipalities as both a claim rep and an underwriter. And so when I was interviewing and deciding where I wanted to go, Horton was just a natural fit for my skills. I've built relationships throughout the industry, and all of those skills and all of those, all of those items on my resume have made me marketable to not just Horton, but a wide range of employers. But I felt like Horton was the best fit for my skills. And in my interview, I wanted to relay that this was the only firm that asked me about their dedication, my dedication, to customer service. In fact, that's what the company's, the company's philosophy is built upon. Anyone with a broker's license can sell you insurance. But what I'm selling to you today is honesty. And what I want you to know is that you need an honest assessment of where you are right now. You need someone to devise a plan to get you where you want to go, and that requires input from you. Information is power, and so what you need is the data to make informed decisions. And the only way you can do that is with a full assessment. So one of the things that I think is important is 
a broker will slide a, a, a proposal across the table and say, this is what we think you need. I think it should work the other way around. I think you need a long-term collaboration, a long-term partnership, whereby you supply us with where you want to go, and then you rely on ex our, our expertise to get you there. And also, you need someone on the ground so that we can be nimble, so as changes occur, you, we can respond to those things immediately. So you just brought up, Trustee Hunt, that you've had several brokers over the last few years, and I think that's because you haven't found the right business match, the, for, the right business partner, if you will. So what you're essentially asking is, what is the relationship of trust, in my opinion? You are entrusting your risk manager with, your, with safety, with the safety of your employees. You are entrusting us with the reducing your, the, the cost of your risk, and you are entrusting us to make your village better. And so what I would ask you to do today is that if you believe that the Horton Group is, some, some, is the firm that can do that for you, that you would tender us a broker of record letter and allow us to come in and do a full assessment and get you on the plan to recovery. Thank you, any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, distinguished uh, department heads, distinguished residents, fellow brokers. My name is Cliff Taylor. I am president and owner of InsureSource. Uh, InsureSource brings over 45 years of combined insurance experience. Uh, we've been in business since 2010. InsureSource was a spinoff of one of our other companies, Small Business Benefits Group, because we felt that we needed to get a company that was more conducive to the type of clients that we were now acquiring. Um, what we want to do with the Village of Dalton is we, want, we don't want a client. We want a relationship. Relationships are important. Relationships build trust. And when you build trust, you have a better chance of being successful and having a successful insurance program. I am a small business. I own my business 100% ownership. So I'm an African-American owned business, and I'm very proud of that. But I am smart enough to know that as a small business, I can't do it alone. And I do know that leverage, and I do know that resources mean something. So. I have partnered with Hub International Midwest, which is the second largest insurance brokerage carrier in the country, ninth largest in the world. That brings leverage, that brings resources, that brings tools. And they're all available to me, which means they're available to you. We are a strategic partner with Hub. I am that point person for Hub in the South Suburban region. Yes, I could go work for Hub. They've tried to acquire me on a couple of occasions. I don't want to do that right now because I still feel as an African-American business owner, there is something higher that I want to get to. There's opportunities that I want to give in my community. I am a product of the Southland region, born and raised in Harvey, Illinois. I understand. I, one of my first jobs was in municipal government. I've worked in every department from public works to the mayor's office. So my municipal experience and my 20 years of insurance experience, I feel gives me a unique skill set that will be beneficial to you. Um, some of the people I've had here today, this is, this is not all my team. Some of our team had to go to a workshop in Arizona. This is some of the team. They're, they're not table ornaments. <laughs> they're not here just pretty faces. They're my actual team members that would be part of this account if we're chosen. And they are available to you. I think there's a benefit of having a small business and a large business. Because, yes, as a small business, you're a big fish in my pond. You're going to get paid attention to. You're going to get the service that you're needed. If you choose me and I'm the person that comes out here every day to help with putting together safety committees, risk management, all of the things that we're needed to have a successful program. If I have to be here two days a week, I'm here. If I have to help do a safety committee meeting and put together risk management, I'm here as much as needed. That's the attention you get from me. But then you get the benefits of a company like Hub that has all the tools and resources needed. Any specialty risk management that we may need, 
I can just pull it from the pool. I don't have to outsource. I don't have to charge you guys and say, hey, we need an additional five or 10 grand for some type of consultant. They have them in-house. That's the benefit of having a large brokerage firm on your side. Uh, some of the people I have here today, I have Dolores Creed. I'm just going to have her speak real quick about, uh, she's our lead client service professional and marketing specialist. And she's just going to talk real quick about how we go out to the market every year. Regardless if you're running good or not so good, it's our job to go out to that market and make sure that we are hitting every carrier that has an appetite for municipality and what type of line of coverage we're trying to cover. So if Dolores, if you could just come up for a few seconds. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just want to introduce myself, Dolores Creed. I'm a senior account manager and I head up a team with the Hub Midwest. We uh, c currently control municipality work as well as real estate and construction operations. So I feel that the breadth of the technical knowledge that we have would be a welcome fit for your group. Uh, we work in conjunction with a uh, all of the large national direct markets. I would be your day-to-day -day operations uh, contact for full contract reviews, uh, coverage form analysis, putting together submissions, uh, marketing with the direct carriers, and proposals of insurance. Uh, I have over 25 years of experience in the commercial insurance platform, and uh, we would very much like an opportunity to work on your business. Thank you, Dolores. And she's been a great team member, a part of my team. Uh, the municipalities that we currently serve, she is our lead person, and um, she's just been a great resource for me. Um, we also have uh, Phil Castro, who is our loss control and risk manager. And she, he, will talk, he will talk a little bit more about the risk management and how important it is. So uh, I specialize in safety and in safety program development, and it's changing the safety culture. And that's what uh, we're about, and that's one of the things that we focus on. And it's one of the things that uh, if you don't have a specialist that's able to come out and help you on a day-to-day -day basis, the job doesn't get done. It's not effective. One of the things that we offer is that we don't just have me. We actually have about 70 risk consultants that work for Hub International. Now, I'm from Tinley Park. I'm right down the street. But we've got a national footprint that I can reach out to anybody. If I need a specialist, if you need a specialist, there's the real deal. I don't have to worry about how that individual gets paid. We are a completely flat organization as far as once we have a client, you're as the client, you have the access to every one of our resources, to so whether it's a fire protection expert or a property engineer or somebody to do a roof inspection, or if you've got problems with uh, employee hiring practices or fraudulent claims and things like that. That's the resource that we bring to the table. That's what makes us different and better than everybody else that's going to be talking to you guys tonight. We're right here in Southland. We're ready to help you out. Thanks, Phil. Okay, I'm going to have one more person, uh, Dave Schwimmel. He's our claims management and loss mitigation and poli I call him, he's a policy specialist. I call him our policy guru. Good evening. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Um, this is my 25th year in, in, in insurance on the claim side. I was told once you get in claims, it's sort of like the godfather. Once you're in, you, you can't get out, and that's very true. Um, why do you buy insurance? Uh, just in case there happens to be a claim, and you have all lines of exposure here. You have a lot of partners out there from landscapers and so forth where there are potential risks and exposures. So at the end of the day, in partnering with someone like, our, like, like us, we have the ability to be your claims advocate on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I came from the carrier side where we had multiple adjusters. We all had two to 300 files. Went on to a bigger broker and realized that when we're working with people of your size, municipalities, you do need a partner. You need, need somebody from a risk management standpoint that can be there from day, day to day. And whether it's a cell phone call at 10 o'clock at night where something occurred, or on a weekend, like I had for a three hour call over the weekend with one of our construction clients. We're here for you because we are a true partner extension of your team. So whether it's workers comp and helping you close out legacy files, work with return to work programs, or it's a property loss or a liability claim, You've got a team of resources with 15 plus years experience of 35 people to choose from within just my team alone. But I would be your go-to quarterback. So with that, I'd like to say from a claim standpoint, this is something that could be touched every day. From weather changes, you name it, there could be a new claim. And you have somebody now in your back pocket to help you from a day-to-day -day standpoint. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dave. As you see, I have a very experienced and capable team and again, 
I've aligned myself with a corporation such as Hub so we can align with our clients. Um, just to piggyback on what Phil, when he talked about risk management, your insurance program is only going to be as successful as your risk management and safety program. If you don't have an effective and safety risk management program, you're just going to see your claims and your renewals continue to go up. So it's very important. And as I build relationships with your department heads, and we have meetings on a regular basis, I build trust. It's one thing if you say, hey, we want you to handle it, Mr. Taylor, and I go out here and say, hey, I'm your broker. You need to see, do A, B, C, D. Well, that's, e that's hard to say to someone that's been here 15 years and felt the way they've been doing it. 15 years has been the right way, even if it's all wrong, but they've never had an injury. So they're not going to listen to me. But if I build a relationship with that person, I build trust with that person. <clears throat> now they're more apt to listen to me. Now we can create a safety culture. But in creating that safety culture, as we move that way, there has to be accountability. So if now we instruct the department heads, this is what needs to be done, and they don't see through it that their employees do it, there has to be accountability. There has to be accountability to that employee. If they don't do what they've been trained, we've come out here, we train the employees, there has to be accountability. That's the only way that we invoke action. So in saying that, um, I think my experience, I think my unique municipal experience would be advantageous to you guys. Um, again, I'm a person from the south suburbs. I take pride in where I'm from. I take pride in understanding what it means to give back. I've been blessed to be put in this opportunity to be able to do this so I can give back to the communities that I serve. I'm going to share uh, a page with you guys that I just want you to show just to show how serious it is about my community involvement. Because time and time again in our African American communities, we see our tax dollars go out of here, but we don't see any come back in community service initiatives or programs or services to give to our youth and our young adults. I'm committed to that. I've always been. I have a not-for-profit that's in my mother's name, Gloria J. Taylor Foundation. She was the first black and African-American woman voted in the city of Harvey in 1977. She passed away in 1996. We started that We've organization. We've minute mark. Okay, so again, thank you again. I know that I can be of good service to you. Appreciate all your time, residents. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Board, and Residents. My name is Patrick Sheehan, and I'm from Mesero Financial. My name is Faith Anderson. I'd like to start by giving a, a brief background on our firm's public entity experience. We currently insure over 250 municipal entities, public entities in the state of Illinois. We specialize in municipalities, and we currently write three times more municipalities than any other broker in Cook County. Uh, we also consult with some of the largest risks in the state, including um, City of Chicago, Chicago Park District, Chicago Public Schools. We insure Will County, Cook County, DuPage County, and we also insure most of the surrounding municipalities. I'm going to turn it over to Faith to give you some uh, more information on that. As Patrick stated, we have a lot of experience on public entity. Um, I presently work on the village of Riverdale, um, Lansing, um, Calumet Park, Calumet City. Um, I've been in the business for 21 years. 16 of the 21 years I've worked on public entity accounts. Um, we have a lot of resources at Mesero Financial, and two of those resources are we have a large risk management services team and that includes claims and loss control. I would be the point person for any issues that the village would have. Um, any claims meetings, I would be in charge of those and any loss control, I would set up a program for the village and I would be the point person from A to Z. You know, one of the other things I wanted to focus on and what we're most proud of is I um, mean, you know, our public entity practice was built organically, meaning one relationship, one client at a time. You know, clients come with us and they stay with us. Our retention in our public entity business is over 97%. Um, some of you know the history. Actually, one of the accounts that we did lose was the village of Dalton. Uh, that was three years ago. Um, some of you in the room know the history. Others don't. Um, when, when we took over, just to give you a little background, when we took over your account in 2007, a few things happened. Your premiums went down. Your self-insured deductibles went down. 
by over 50 percent that means that first the dollars that you're paying out of the village's pocket we reduce those by 50 percent we also doubled close to doubled your insurance limits so I want to give pure facts here your, your limits went from six million dollars to 11 million dollars without paying additional premium for the next six years we successfully managed your program there were no issues your, your premiums remained flat your SARs remained flat the losses improved and there was coverage we succeeded because we worked as a team we know your TPA CCMSI we work closely with them I work with Steve Arzino on a regular basis we know your village attorney we worked with your own uh, internal attorney at the time and we worked with the board and the administration we were removed as your broker three years ago since then premiums have gone up your self-insured retention increased from 25 to 50,000 up to hundred thousand dollars so every claim that occurs going forward the village pays the first hundred thousand dollars losses have increased and you know just recently coverage was moved and I, to my understanding some basic coverages were removed you know we think to be successful in the insurance to have a successful insurance program you need continuity and collaboration between the board between the TPA between us between the insurance carriers we feel like we offer that we've offered it in the past to the village and we'd certainly welcome the opportunity to offer it again so we thank you for the consideration and we'd love to work with him do you have any closing comments I look forward to the opportunity and uh, you know we have so much experience I have so much experience and I welcome a challenge and I look forward and I would hope you guys would give us the opportunity to work on this on the village because I look forward to that so thank you I, I do have a I can ask a question right yes sir. Okay. Um, yeah I do remember three years ago um, you lost the, the account but as I think I kind of recall when the new broker came in was it something dealing with the TPA or a TA someone was actually doing fraudulent stuff or does that do you remember anything about that or I don't know if it was true or not I just I, remember I, someone was saying I that. think you might be referencing and, and Stan might be able to comment on that we were only the broker for the property and the liability and not the workers compensation there was another broker that handled the workers compensation and that program was self-insured at the time and there was an independent TPA but we were told by the village that that's run independent from us and so we weren't involved in that place so you weren't involved okay no but this time the broker will be involved with the working company well, the, too, the, or you still want the to village involved? actually has the, the you, you can select two brokers if you if you choose um, you can select one broker for the workers compensation you can select another broker for the property liability and as you currently have you have a separate broker for the employee benefits which is outside of this but right now we have one broker for both right correct but historically you had two up until three years ago so who was responsible for that fire in the what, which broker was that I'm sorry, could you ask the question one more time who was the who was the working cop and broke before it was a relative of a former was it one of these people was it one of these people on this list? no oh, okay. the, these groups had nothing to do with that yes uh -huh. there was an insurance company but the third party administrator was a relative of a former administrator okay okay right. I have like a typical interview type question right now <laughs> sure. so what would you do different this time to make sure you won't get fired again <laughs> Well, I, I'd like to know why we got fired in the first place. Oh, I don't. I, I mean, you have to ask the. Because I think I, I, I think our results spoke for themselves. Uh, What's the last comment? I think what he asked what we would do differently in order to not get fired again. No, I'm not talking about that one. You said I think. Oh, I, I, I think our results spoke for ourselves. Okay. Spoke for themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least would be the Gallagher folks. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Um, my name is Rich Tekluska. I'm the uh, Midwest Regional uh, Niche Director for Public Sector. 
And uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to cut down what I was going to say. Uh, Gallagher started in 1927 uh, as a small regional firm here in Chicago. Uh, over the past uh, almost 90 years, what we did was we were actually involved in a lot of merger and acquisition activity. So the way I like to look at it is we're a, the fourth largest brokerage firm in the country. Uh, but we're made up of a lot of small agencies. We've acquired uh, agencies as little as two or three people on up to our largest acquisition, which was about 3,000. Our team in, um, uh, in the Chicago area is 60 individuals that focus in on nothing but public sector. So it's cities, counties, townships, villages, uh, special service districts, and some state business. Uh, nationally, there's a group of about 300 individuals uh, in 34 different offices. Uh, we handle about 7,000 different municipalities. What I really want to focus in on is what the services are going to be uh, provided to the Village of Dalton, and that's where Larry Phillips and Ethan Salzinger are going to come in and talk about it. Hi, good evening. Before I dive into the, the services, I want to take time to briefly introduce myself. My name is Larry Phillips, and I first and foremost want to thank you for allowing us to to have some time to present to you this evening. I'm excited to be here in particular because I'm very familiar with the area. My aunt and cousins live right down the street and have lived in Dalton ever since I can remember. Um, and you know, this obviously presents a unique opportunity to, for me to give back to a village that has done so much for my family. Um, but to give you a little bit of information, background information on myself, I grew up in Cabrini Green lived there until I was 16 years old, at which time the building that we were living in was being demolished. So my family was relo relocated to uh, the Roseland uh, neighborhood where my mother and brothers currently reside. So I am uh, in your area a fair amount. As it goes, as far as the career, my career goes, I've been with Gallagher for three years now. I have been a part of the Gallagher family for five years uh, because I've came up through the internship program. When I was studying at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, I spent two summers in our internship program, and my decision to come on full-time to Gallagher was a no-brainer. Uh, from day one, they were very welcoming, um, preached the importance of putting your clients first, and I, that's something that I respected. Um, and so uh, with that, before I pass it on to, to Ethan, my colleague here, I just want to uh, make a point to say that you know, one of the reasons I decided to focus solely on municipalities and public housing authorities uh, is because I'm passionate about giving back to my community and paying forward what I was so privileged to have received throughout my childhood and adolescence. Um, and so with that being said, I'm fortunate enough to be able to give back to Chicago Housing Authority as they are a current client of mine. And my hope is that I'll have that opportunity pr to provide that quality level of service uh, to the village. Um, with that being said, I think it's vitally important to have someone, a, a broker, that not only understands your risk inside and out, but also understands the actual people uh, in the community that you are, are actually servicing. So um, with that, I'll hand it over to my colleague to introduce himself. Good evening. Ethan Selsinger. Um, just like Larry, I'm a product of Gallagher's internship program. That's how I met Larry about five years ago. Um, now, yep, we've been here for about three years. Um, grew up in Chicago, went to Illinois State. To be honest, couldn't tell you what insurance was when I was 18 years old. Um, and started going through the, the financial school and political science, uh, which is kind of where I shifted towards the public sector, which is where I met Rich and his team. Um, the reason why I chose to work with municipalities is because I worked with Rich and his team. Um, you know, we spend our time coming to meetings going out to clients four or five times a week. This is what we do. This is what we're experts in. Um, we have a number of clients that you could reach out to, anyone on the board, anyone on staff, um, that would gladly you know, speak upon our, uh, our, our team as a whole. We have a 98.6 retention rate, 98.6% uh, retention rate with our municipalities as of last year. Um, the packet I handed out is kind of, I. I gave you the meat and potatoes, and now this one you have is kind of a condensed version given the time. Uh, so we can quickly walk through. Uh, if you turn the first page, is, you see that colorful little graph there. It's called Core 360. This just kind of shows you what you're paying us to do. 
we're your insurance broker, this is what you pay us to do. We come up, you see the insurance premium, well this is how we get there. Uh, there's six different aspects that kind of go into this, um, and my colleagues can speak on that. Uh, I think the most important part though is not only for the staff, but also for the board um, to work hand in hand to kind of see this come to fruition and always be aware uh, of where your money's going. Insurance is an expensive product. Uh, you pay it every single year. You can't operate without it. And I think it's time that you know where every single dollar of that is going and we're here to kind of show you and break down and show you where we're going to work with you and, and get to that goal. So as my colleague Ethan alluded to, we do have a, a product or um, a platform by the name of uh, Core 360, which is essentially is a, uh, a way for you that allows you to complete a comprehensive assessment that maps out what all of your risks and exposures are um, to, to better protect your assets. And as you can see in this page, there are six different cost drivers or factors, if you will, um, that actually relate to your total cost of risk. Uh, the first being the insurance premiums, and this is typically what mo most brokers uh, decide to focus on and what a lot of employers decide to solely focus on, and that would be the premiums that you pay the actual insurance companies and the compensation uh, that you give to the actual brokers per for performing the brokerage services. And uh, we actually like to uh, look at other factors also in conjunction with the insurance premiums because there's other factors that go into your total cost of risk. For example, moving on to number two, that'd be the, the program structure. The program structure essentially um, has to deal with the control that the village has within the program. As you move from the left side of a guaranteed traditional uh, first dollar program and move towards a self-insured retention program, you'll have more control. So it's really analyzing the, the total program as a whole. Uh, another one of the cost drivers includes losses within the deductible or retention. And essentially, um, depending on your loss history, your exposures, it may be beneficial for the village to <clears throat> to adopt a, a higher retention or, or a lower retention. Um, so that's an, an something else that we look into. And obviously, the losses within the self-insured retention happens to be a, a large um, cost for a lot of uh, entities. So that's something that we really want to hone in on. Uh, the rest of the core 360 has kind of been touched on um, and now the fourth presentation. Um, given the time, I'd like to kind of move forward a little bit. If you do have questions at all on any of the pages, please feel free to stop. But like I said, given the time, I'd like to move forward and kind of hone in on a couple other points. Uh, if you keep turning back, uh, you'll see services that are included, the team you'll be working with, kind of how we run our, uh, our renewals, how many days we give the board to talk and discuss. Um, and moving back towards the end where you see this JD power sign right here. Um, this is one thing that, again, kind of shows uh, what a client means to us. Uh, it's for customer satisfaction. Again, we have one of the highest retentions of any insurance broker. Uh, we're a fully tran transparent insurance broker, which is pretty rare. Uh, when we give you a proposal, the board, the staff, you will see where every single dollar that the city is spending is going towards. You'll see how much you're paying your broker. You'll see how much each line of coverage costs. And we'll break down every single line and give you options. If you raise your deductible here, how much it'll cost you or save you. Um, and then going to the next point, um, one thing that Gallagher is very proud of, five years in a row, we're named the world's most ethical company, the only insurance broker in the world to do so, and I think that goes hand in hand with kind of how we do conduct ourselves as professionals. Um, and then on the last page is just kind of a quick snapshot of our company. Rich already kind of alluded to us where our group started, uh, where Gallagher started as a company. Uh, with that, do you have any closing comments? Yeah, I just, I just want to finish off by saying we did the same, I shouldn't say the same presentation, but we did a, a, a broker selection process last week 
and it took us an hour and a half. I mean, we could talk about this for days. I'm proud of what I do. I've been, with the I've been with the company for 28 years, and there's so much going on right now in not only the industry, but also with our business and with our clients. And, um, you know, we're going to continue that discussion with that client. Uh, We've reached a 10 minute mark. Sorry, sir. Thank I you. Question. And I guess for all the brokers, I should have asked this um, before. Can you give us some uh, references from the south suburbs? I know some of them have clients out here, but if you have, if you don't have any municipalities in the south suburbs, I, it just made me think of when um, Mayor Mayor's Road, they shot out Riverdale, Calumet City, Calumet Park. Those are very those are right those are neighbors so if you have any and just the other brokers point persons from municipalities so we can just call them and ask how do you feel about your broker because literally all you guys sound the same to me really yeah. and, and, and what i need to do is be able to call some references municipalities that's similar to Dalton. Prefer. And we can we can send you names and phone numbers and yeah maybe email them to the village yeah. manager and he can maybe yeah. shoot them or just out of out of courtesy to our clients we'd like to give them a heads up that someone's oh no be you don't have to do so. it tonight yeah no I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no no that's fine yeah, just someone I can actually talk yeah. to and, and ask them a question mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you very much thank you thank you thank you. Next thing on the agenda, Mayor, would be the Mayor's report. Uh, Mayor, Shan yes. before you start, can I make a comment? Go ahead. Okay, uh, Mayor Kay, for the record, I just want to add this, and I should have added with the uh, zoning. Um, you cannot rezone a property without notifying people within 750 feet of that property. I just Pu want to put that public in for the hearing. Record. Yes. So that's why I was saying we need a zoning um, committee. Right. That was it. That's for the record. Thank you. All right, thank you. Shot. <laughs> um, those companies that made presentations, if you would like to leave, it wouldn't be. Um, you're welcome to stay, but if you'd like to leave, you, you know, wouldn't offend us. Okay, okay thank you, Mayor, Village Clerk, Administrator trustees and committee heads. And of course, the residents just have some brief announcements from the mayor's office. First and foremost, Coffee with the Mayor in two weeks, Saturday, May 14th, we'll be having in partnership with the Neighborhood Housing Services. Uh, they'll be having Karen A. Yarbrough, the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, will be with us. She'll be presenting the free property after death workshop. This will feature information about the estate planning process and specifically the differences between wills, trusts, and the new transfer on death instruments, which can help save loved ones thousands of dollars. So we are inviting the entire community and those watching to come out to coffee with the mayor. Secondly, you may have seen, of course, the weather didn't cooperate, but there will be flea markets every Wednesday and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., 143rd Street and Chicago Road. 143rd and Chicago Road, you can go over there, Chicago and Greenwood Road. Uh, a lot of people drove by, talked to us, uh, showed interest. It's going to be a very vibrant uh, place for commerce and sharing of ideas and information and strategies and food. You'll have the flea market on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and the farmer's market will be every Friday. So these are some of the things that uh, Mayor Rogers' office is doing to counteract some of the issues here in the village. Call our office for uh, any questions or concerns, 708-201-3348 or 708-201-3269. If you have any questions about vending, which we have a lot of, in fact, since we announced it, our phones have been ringing off the hook. Also, uh, you're going to be seeing and hearing more information about the 50-20 program. This morning, the mayor was joined by elected officials and uh, many of the committee heads from the village of Dalton and also some members of the youth uh, to announce the 50-20 Summer Youth Employment and Enrichment Initiative program. In fact, uh, we have a brief video presentation to show you, to tell you a little bit about what happened this morning. Direct your attention to the wall, please. We're here today to announce a pilot program here for the village of Dalton. I'm Mayor Riley Rogers. This pilot program is the hiring of 50 youth for our summer program. This program has been dubbed the 5020 
Youth Hiring Initiative Program. The 5020 program will hire 50 youth from the village of Dalton for 20 hours a week. We want to give the youth of Dalton something to do this summer. On behalf of myself and Senator Napoleon Harris and Will Davis, who I just spoke to, I'm proud to stand here today with Mayor Rogers and the good village people in, uh, in Dalton. And not only talk about the youth, but also talk about employment. We know that any time a, a youth get a job, it helps not only their career, but it helps them sustain uh, in the summer and stay out of trouble. I'm proud to stand here with the mayor and talk about ways that we can work together. And we all know that Springfield has issues, but we're here to talk about good things that are going on in our community with, a youth, with our youth getting a job in Dalton. We're here to not only offer our support, but anything we can do from Springfield, the mayor has asked that we take this program to other communities. And I'm proud to say that we have this on the agenda in Calumet City so we can make sure that we're partnering with the village of Dalton uh, to make sure that our youth are employed this summer. First, I'd like to um, applaud the mayor for bringing a program like this to the village. An investment into the uh, youth of our community is like investing in our future and the youth are the uh, future leaders of tomorrow. But also what this program does is it, instead of having negative interactions with the police, we can promote positive interactions with the police and the members of the local government here. So all the, all the kids and uh, the youth of this program will get to see the government in action and hopefully in the future get to take a part in this government. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. So as we go forward with this initiative, I like for um, everybody here today to give it your all and we're going to make this really work in the south suburbs. We're going to ask other communities to sign a pledge to hire youth for the summer programs in the future summer um, years ahead. So thank you today. Thank everyone for coming out, all our youth in our command and Mr. and Mrs. Creighton, State Representative Thaddeus Jones, Commissioners, President, Park District, my administration. Thank you very much. I remember my first job, my first summer employment job. It added to my life, even though I didn't like the summer job. It helped me out and it helped me uh, not only prepare for other employment, but it also trained me to do the right things when I'm working for employers uh, and also uh, working with others. So it's, it's a huge investment, not only in the, in the youth, but also in the community as well. Um, basically, the 5020 program, uh, it's something that allows y the youth to have an opportunity, if not, like, I know if I had an opportunity, it would be my first job, to get a little bit of experience so we stay off the streets and we have a, um, a higher chance of just being, you know, involved in a lot of things that we're not involved in today. Um, I think our youth, we really need something to do because it's like we don't have anything to do, so we go look to the streets and we're all in the streets and that only leads to violence and non-productive things. So. Okay. Youth specifically, just all youth, they need something to do in the summertime. So what they do depends on the opportunities that are laid out in front of them. So without the many opportunities that are given, shown here, the 5020 program, they look to certain things that just, they don't contribute well to the environment. I think it gives an opportunity for males, even young females, to get get out and experience new things because um, the city it seems like they're giving up on the youth so it gives them a chance to get around and um, I was I was a part of a summer youth program and I think it gave me a lot of opportunity and resources and I want I'm gonna tell everybody about it because I hear a lot of youth saying they need a job and it's hard to find a job and they can't get interviews so it gave them a chance to get off the streets and make the moms proud. Now you said some of them. Well it's often been said that our youth is our future. Unfortunately our youth is today and today like never before in a global society we can't wait till the future our youth needs an opportunity today and I'm so pleased that our mayor R Riley Rogers has taken this task to heart and stepped up to the plate and said we're not going to wait till the future we're going to do something right now we're going to give the, our youth the opportunity right now nothing can ever replace the, the positive uh, uh, areas that they can work in in this village. So I'm tremendously grateful to Mayor Rogers for what he has done. Thank him so very much. 
and I as well. I believe also that our youth will understand, as our police chief mentioned, Ms. Chief Collins, that you know what, they'll get a different perspective about administrative, um, about po political positions. We are a municipality, and thinking about offering this, this opportunity, uh, enticing other communities to step on board, then that means to me, saying to me, as a taxpayer, as an individual, that you take our youth very seriously, understanding that they want to do the right things. And I love the 50-20 because all of our babies are not A students. Those babies that are struggling, we have babies that are walking the street wanting to do positive things. So it is an awesome opportunity for the village of Dalton and every other village to take tasks and serious task of making sure that we're working for our today and our tomorrow. Yes, as our chairman of the youth committee, uh, the jobs are important for the youth, but at the same time, while the young people are here in the village of Dalton uh, on the job, I'm sure that many will be mentored in how to create a job for themselves. So a job is definitely needed for the young people. And, um, and here in the village of Dalton, as the mayor stated, we want to be the prototype. We want to be the village that will show the other villages what you can do when you partner with elected officials, when you partner with local business people, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so as stated, the 5020 program, now many times these youth programs target, as uh, was stated, it targets the achievers, the straight-A students, but this is a program that will also target those who are considered to be at risk. They deserve to have access to resources as well. They deserve support as well, and that's very important to many of you in the room, of course. We have many programs, and all of you who are involved in some way, shape, or form with helping the youth, we would like to partner with you, and also we ask uh, for your aid and assistance in making this potential uh, program a success now this summer and for summers to come. Youth involved in this program will receive training in civic leadership, job skills, and conflict resolution. And resources will be available through a variety of community-based organizations and several companies that are providing internship opportunities. Again, any questions, you can call 708-201-3269 or 708-201-3348. Also, install the app and continue to go on the Village of Dalton's Facebook page because the um, announcement as it relates to how people can fill out their card to receive um, places in the 5020 program, that's how we're going to announce it. And lastly, we have the Mother's Day uh, brunch breakfast that is going to be this Saturday. That's going to be this Saturday. Mother's Day breakfast, 9 a.m. to noon at the Dorchester. If you have mothers, mothers, daughters, everyone, call our office, get signed up. We want to give you all the respect and honor that you deserve, not just on Mother's Day, but always. Thank you, and that concludes my you report. You must make uh, RSVP for those. Yes, sir? You must uh, do an RSVP for yes. the breakfast, Mother's Day breakfast. Yes. All right. One Thank you. The, thanks, to Shad. One of the things in regards to bringing the uh, 5020 program to the village is that uh, we're going to partner with um, businesses here to give our youth something to do during the summer. They will, there will be 50 youth. They will work 20 hours a week, four hours a day. It's five days a week for an eight-week period during the summer. That would allow them to have something to do, also earn some money. So um, we're asking, or we'll be asking other communities to sign the pledge to jump on board and in the south suburbs. So if we can get the south suburbs to hire, just say 50, and some of the smaller communities won't be able to, to do that, but we're looking at possibly hiring close to 1,000 youth every summer that would give them gainful employment and possibly keep them out of trouble and having interaction with the police. Uh, in designing this program, um, there's always opportunities for the super achievers. Every summer, um, a lot of determination in regards to employment for youth is based upon their academic levels. Well, everyone is not as smart as the other one, so I think there should be opportunities for those at-risk youth to say, you know, give us an opportunity, give us something to do, and maybe we won't get in trouble. And that was the design of this program. Now, we anticipate, and we've been getting a lot of 
um, questions in uh, how do you, how is the, the youth going to be selected? Actually, um, we expect a huge number of youth applying for jobs. At this time, we've appropriated or will appropriate eighty thousand dollars, along with contributions from some of the business people here. We'll ask some of those business people to employ those those fifty youth. But these youth will be working in every department here in the village, from police department, administration, public works, clerk's office, um, to give them an opportunity to learn and be in some type of internship um, program while they are learning. Um, so I think it's a good program. And the youth will be selected based upon a lottery. They will come to the village here. They will fill out the cards with pertinent information ask in, in regards to their hobbies and their future interests. And we will try to place those youth in those categories where they have interest in to help them go and move along. And the date of the selection for that lottery will be announced. Uh, our program will start June 6th. It will run for eight weeks uh, and will end on August 30th. So we're expecting a large response from this um, from this program and hopefully we're in the right direction to go for it in the future years to put on more than 50, 50 youth here in the community. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. It's time for citizens address. Any person that would like to approach the, the podium, there's a three minute limit. And uh, Chief, I'd like for you to, to maintain that limit. I'm just reading this. Good evening, Mayor Rogers, trustees, Village of Dalton residents. I come to you respectfully today, Mayor Rogers, Village Administrator Stan Urban, Board of Trustees, Human Resources Director Angela, and Director of Administrative Service Janice Johnson. I come to you respectfully, and forgive me if I sound not like myself, but I come to you respectfully to ask about my recent demotion from Director of Community and School Services to clerk with the police department on June 4th, 2015, I was hired as the Director of Community and School Services by Mayor Riley Rogers. I have been doing a job, this job diligently for 10 months with no problems and without incident. On April 1st, 2016, I was demoted to clerk in the police department with no notice. I received an outstanding performance evaluation from my supervisor, which I have along with this letter, requesting an explanation for sudden demotion. Not only was I blindsided by the village actions, I never received any explanation from the Human Resources Department about anything going on or plans to eliminate my position or replace me. I am now forced to work weekends, different shifts, and $5,000 was cut from my pay. I feel that I have helped the residents of Dalton with no help from Dalton, and they deserve to continue to be serviced as they have been for over the past 10 months. I'm receiving calls regarding things that I have taken care of in the past, and residents want to know what's going on. I'm asking you, Mayor Rogers, Village Administrator Urban, HR Director Ms. Blatcher, for some type of resolve and explanation as to why this action was taken against me and I've been asking for it for a while. I am available to speak to any one of you all, but I come to you today because <clears throat> I'm new in the workforce. Anybody know me? But I'm an honest woman. I believe in doing the right thing. I believe I was personally attacked by Mr. Stan Urban, who has harassed me, who has done said things to people about me, who has had my area, I've been in a hostile environment with him because I complained about a couple of things any other human being would complain about. 
So I come before the residents that have suffered from my demotion. And instead of me asking each one, I ask them to come to the village to ask the mayor and the trustees yourself, how do we allow a man who keeps complete confusion up in the village? He harasses and says anything that he wants to say. The three minute mark. Okay, thank you. And people are tired of it. People are afraid to say something because if you do, you'll get demoted like me. Thank you. Give honor to the mayor, the trustees that are here. Just, I'm just here as a representative. My name is Reverend Robert Cornelius, New Zion Covenant Church. And I'm just here as a representative for Bishop Davis, who cannot be here because he's out of the state. And we've known, as the letter will tell you, uh, Sister Karen, for many, many years to be not just an upstanding citizen, but one who actually cares. We interacted with her for several years in the program that she ran, and she ran it excellently, where they brought hundreds of people who were disadvantaged to the building where we're at now, and we interacted with her. So I know her personally, and I know that she is of a, a good and upstanding character. And again, Bishop Davis's letter will speak for New Zion Covenant Church. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I mean, I guess. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Are you going to respond to this, or anyone going to respond? She this, said a just lot. Just a citizen's address. No Let response. us hear. Oh, she, okay. she, she, uh, uh, Miss Hicks has, has has chosen to bring an employment issue up at citizen's address. This is not how employment issues are settled. But it's covered but, right. but but and there's two sides to every story. So. Um, so I want to hear all the people that she has here in her behalf, and then I'd like you to hear our behalf, or my behalf. Thank Am you. Am I next? Okay. Yes. My name is Annette Morrow. I live at 14921 Ever Street, and I'm calling in behalf of my neighborhood. You know, our neighborhood has had a lot of troubles but it's getting to be a wonderful neighborhood. Uh, this gentleman up here made a comment that there was a water main break on Chicago Road. Yes. There was a water main break on Ever Street. And since February, there has been gravel and everything on 120, uh, 14924 Ever Street. And as of June 8th, the young lady there that will be a freshman at Thorn Ridge will be forever in a wheelchair. There will be no access to her walkway. And as of right now, hospital care, anything, they can't achieve that. So I'm calling for that young lady. And next door to that, a sewer had dropped. Now it is a four or five and a quarter inch drop. And so if you pull a handicapped vehicle up against there, it's either gonna go in that hole or into the other area. So I'd like to see that fixed before the one on Chicago Road, because this one's been waiting f since February. And we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Well, one of the things that I asked the public works superintendent is to revisit those areas that we had water main breaks, not only just to do the resurfacing, but also in cases where there was landscaping that's needed. So um, we will we'll make that a priority, uh, since there is a handicapped individual there, and yes. make sure that it was taken care of. Thank you very much Thank you for, for her. Thank you for that to our attention. Okay. Uh, good uh, evening. My name is Bill Owens. I'm with the Owens Group. Uh, I am uh, here to just share with you a couple of items. Uh, one, I would very much like my company to be considered uh, as one of the brokers for the brokerage service, continuing the brokerage services. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to open your own firm, and that's what I did back in 1989 after many years with Gallagher. You heard uh, Rich Saluska speak here today. Uh, I see that uh, Les Peach is here today. Uh, I met these gentlemen when I was at, at Gallagher. Um, the, I will say this because I know I only have three, uh, three minutes. When we were first involved with the, with the uh, village, we spent $60,000 of our own money and never got paid uh, 
uh, because the, the village didn't have any. We were a name broker of record. The village didn't have any uh, records with the new administration coming in. And at right before Christmas, the village gave it to another broker. And we had a quote that was from the previous broker, Mesero. The reason that the quote went up is because your losses went up. If your losses go up, your premium goes up, period. Then uh, this past May, we were named the broker, and we saw an opportunity to uh, improve the coverages. We did. We took you off a of claims made policy for your law enforcement liability. You shouldn't be on that. And we moved you to an occurrence policy. So that we improved a lot of the coverages. And again, if anyone stands here and says that I can reduce your pricing, that is mis a misleading statement if you don't have the loss information. Losses, the reason your property premium is a little high is because you had an $800,000 loss. So if you have an $800,000 loss followed by uh, another $200,000 loss, I think your premium is going to be a little high. Now, we have worked very diligently, uh, hand in hand, with uh, Mr. Urban. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mr. Urban. Uh, he, he's, uh, uh, he knows us also from the village of Downers Grove, which we are the broker there. We handle a number of towns in the south suburbs. Uh, this is a company that I've built over the years. All we ask is that as an African-American company, we deal directly with the insurance carriers. We don't go through another broker. You won't see another broker uh, standing next to us. We are the broker. And we go directly to the insurance companies. And, when, and you can call any of the mayors of the towns that we handle. We've saved them plenty of dollars, plenty of dollars. In some cases, millions of dollars. One of those cases is, is, is Waukegan. We saved them $6 million. We've reached a three minute mark. So I would ask that uh, you consider us. We've, we've got renewal quotes. Uh, your carriers have uh, uh, given us those quotes. Taking those quotes away from us is the same thing that happened to us before. And that's, and that's just not fair. Mark, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor, this is, I'm Mrs. Clayton. I really thank you for taking these youths off the street. They needed love and attention, and this is what they're going to get. I know I worked with handicapped children, the BD children, and I know what it is because the parents don't give them love and attention, and we are doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clayton. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, trustees and department heads, and very much so the residents of Dalton. Uh, my name is Barbara Parker, and I am a resident of Dalton. Uh, on uh, April 18th, I passed out uh, some concerns that I had, and I figured that they would be sort of lengthy as far as getting a response or whatever. Uh, as of, t and I ask that uh, the responses be given uh, verbally or in writing. I haven't received anything as of today, writing or verbally. I just run through the questions that I had. Uh, number one, why is the mayor allowed to make purchases using the Village of Dalton credit card? Over the years, there have been a few large purchases. As of October 2015, there is a $25,000 credit limit. This allowance is in addition to the mayor's monthly expense account of $1,500. There is no ordinance or policy in place regarding the use of this card. Two, did the village attorney return the $25,000 duplicate payment that was made in error? If no, how was the amount accounted for requesting copies of transaction? Three, was the overtime payment made to a part-time employee refunded? If no, why not? Overtime is only paid if the employee works 40 or more hours per work week. And that I checked with federal and state labor law. Four quarterly uh, financial report, income, expenses, and balance forward. Uh, we get the expenses. Uh, each meeting, 
Uh, we don't know how much income we take in each month, quarterly, or anything. We don't know how much money we have in the bank as of today. I'm speaking of residents. We don't know this. I ask that all requests be made uh, at our next meeting, which is today, May 2nd. And I ask for verbal and writing. And I ask for a written copy to be submitted to the clerk to be placed in village records. And like I said, I haven't received any response in any matter as of today. So uh, the thought is uh, the residents are not important or how money is spent is not important uh, or whatever, or we don't deserve any responses or anything. So to the residents, uh, pay attention, ask questions or whatever. You have a right to do that as a resident, to know where your money is going and what it's being spent for. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Rogers, Good evening. Uh, trustees, administration, and the community. I'm Kenny Williams. I'm here on behalf of my friend, Karen Hicks. Um, I'm not getting into any detail or picking any facts, but I know over the last three to four weeks, there's been some incidents that's happened on Chicago Road with one of my fellow um, business gentlemen that I know that has the barber shop and there's some homes. Some windows have been broken out. Uh, with the youth. Uh, right there at the grammar school, there's a crossing guard, but once you pass that area, from that point all the way over to the tracks and on down toward the Lincoln, there's no one there to, to monitor the kids. And I noticed about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I asked my wife, I said, I haven't seen the car around. You know, the car that Miss Six used to use, and she basically was patrolling the area. She was basically in a sense to me like another form of security for the village of Dalton. You know, she took care of the kids, she made sure they stayed, took care of themselves, there were no fighting, no, nothing like that happening on the streets. And over the last three weeks, there's been a lot of incidents with the police having to deal with children, picking them up and calling their parents because I have a few people that I know who children have broken windows, one on a barber shop, the other one broke some, a window on a vehicle the other day and these children, basically, I appreciate what you all are doing, and I applaud you all with the 50-20. Um, and 50 jobs is important, and I'm willing to uh, assist you all with any placing of any youth, those that have a, a D average, a B average, C average, A average, those that are uh, at risk uh, at the barbershop if they need something for the summer. So we are at Silk and Classy Barbershop, Silk and Classy Barber College, and I just want to share with you all I got a Facebook text about three days ago from a young man who's working with me right now. And I went to tears because I didn't get it. Someone sent it and forwarded it to me. He mentioned me almost 20 years ago. He said this, I wanted to be a barber because my barber showed me how to do things and be professional. I ended up, and this is, these are his words to end the text that he ended up going to Silk and Classy, which is the barber school of his choice, which is where he got taught by us. Then he's now also employed at our shop. Now he's also a partner at the new location. So he said he's went full circle, and he can appreciate it because he was given the opportunity to do something. And like Mr. Muhammad said, everybody's not going to be able to work in an environment where they have to be closed in. All of us don't, I cannot work in an environment where there's a lot of gossip, a lot of hearsay and she say. I have to just be outside. I have to be somewhere where I can use all that God gave me. And so I'm just asking that you Mr. all, Williams, whatever happens. Three minute mark. Yes, sir. If you all could just consider whatever's happening with Miss Hicks and allow her to be back out <coughs> in the street. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Trustees and Chief Collins. I came here on behalf of Karen. She's my friend and she's my sister. And What's your name, sir? My name is Johnny Sabry. Um, Mayor, I've met with you on more than one occasion to support the underdog. And I, I want to thank you for giving Karen opportunity to show you her value. And I'm sure you saw that when you appointed her. As well as the chief, I read his letter. We don't have many people who are willing to sacrifice their life in the streets. 
in the streets of Chicago, when you had a thousand people shot and over almost 200 murdered. Now you say you care about the children, then you got to care about the people who put themselves on the front line for the children. And it's a mistake to remove any one of those people that can make our lives safer and give our children a chance for the future. Can't keep talking about the future without putting something very valuable in front of it. That's the bulletproof vest. And we have a duty to stand by anybody, the mayor, the chief, because the only way they can do their jobs if you have somebody else on the front line. Hi, my name is Patricia Weisinger, and I come on behalf of Karen Hicks. I've known Karen over 25 years now, and she is one of the most compassionate people. She is really a heaven-sent person here. Her de dedication and devotion to her job in people, people in general, uh, is just overwhelming. Uh, in my own personal life, she has been my guardian angel. I can pick up the phone and say, hey, Karen, what's, what's going on? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing. I, I need help. And she will come if I need her to come. And that's what she does for everyone. Uh, it's, it's who she is. It's, it's her inner soul, her, her all. And if she could not do this job, I don't think anyone would have ever hired her for it to be in with. And I, I think she has proven herself. And she continues to prove herself on the job and off the job. And I, I just want to come to say that uh, reconsideration would be great if at all possible. Uh, she's really well deserving of this position. And she's deserving as a person. And that's what I'd like to say about Karen. Thank you. Hello, Mayor and trustees and all my family from Dalton. I'm just here to uh, ask a question of the Public Works Department and the Village of Dalton. I stay at 14801 South Kenbark. I'm having a real bad issue with my trees ripping up my sidewalk. Uh, it's also giving me a big issue with my foundation. I have a quad level at that uh, address. And uh, I've been there for 25 years. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, now I'm getting some real bad issues with flooding in my lower basement, which is almost six feet below sidewalk level. But my only question is the village of Dalton is that outside tree level is you guys' property. I cut it, I take care of it, I manage it. But my taxes only tell me I'm paying for my house, my square footage. I'm not paying for that, them trees and all of that out there. And I'm wondering how we can rectify this problem uh, all my kids are grown and gone. I'm going to retire next year. Another thing I'd like to tell you with that electrician program that you guys are initiating, I've got 37 years with Local 134. I'd be more than glad to help them kids out with some schooling. But I need you guys to help me out with that sidewalk. Uh, so I'm just coming here to be on record. Uh, Thank you. Let's see if you guys can help me out. I know, I know where you live, right there on the corner. You got a Camaro over there? Uh, that's my daughter, Scott. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody have a blessed night. Right. We'll, we'll send Public Works over there, take a look at it, and uh, see what we can do to help you. Good evening, Mayor, Good evening. everyone. Uh, my name is Gwen Nance, and I, I live on 142nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I want to agree with the people that did come up here and speak on uh, Karen's behalf, mm -hmm. I've been on her for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I've known her to help people get jobs and everything. And I, I want to say that, but I have something to say about the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, I've been there 24 years. And I remember when they used to come and trim the trees every year. I got a dead tree. It's really almost dead that's been in front of my house for quite some time, and I called 
and ask them about trimming the tree or cutting it down. And the first thing they said to me was to give them half. I mean, I, I feel like I pay a lot in taxes. We pay a lot in Dalton. Uh, well, I, and I, don't, I don't know who told you that, and that's not the, our policy. Oh, well, that was told to me. And when they were running around trying to get votes for different mm -hmm. things, oh, they were promising the world to us. Yeah. And, you know, I just want you all to come out and look at that tree, because okay. every time the wind blows, trust me, big branches come. And then what they do, they, be, they fall in the middle of the street. Sometimes we go out there and pick them up. Sometimes we don't. Right. But when we don't, the people come out and they throw them up in my yard. Mm -hmm. But they're quick to give you a ticket on something. Yeah. And Wait, what's the address, ma'am? 243 East 142nd Street. We'll be out there tomorrow. I do appreciate it because, okay. you know, people can get hurt with them branches. Right. So I do okay. appreciate it. We'll be out there tomorrow. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just actually just, I'm here to speak on behalf of the agreement for the vehicle towing services. And I'm actually just here for clarification. And before I get started, I just want to say that. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Gina, Gina Shraba Mitnick. I just want to say that I, I noticed that there's a little bit of tension on the board and, I, and some comments have been made about certain companies and what they do, what they don't do. And I'm not here to bash any company because I know that whether it's Wes's, whether it's W&W &W, or whether it's Airline, that they all three run respectful businesses. So I don't know why everyone's on a mission to destroy people. Okay, number two, the question I have is, if we go according to section six, where it's talking about the wrecker and the towing equipment, that is needed at the time of this proposal being submitted, okay? It states that one heavy is needed. Chief has made and said that W&W does not have that. My question is, is somebody, I think it was Ms. Tiffany, I, I recall mentioned that there's something that states that he is buying a heavy, is that correct? And where is that? Is, it's not in this proposal. It, what, is it that, he, yeah. that he's buying one? Right. Because there is an invoice in here, but there is no buyer's signature. Yeah, that's exactly what I have, man. But there's no signature. Okay. So, so where's you, proof that he's so buying the vehicle? That he shouldn't have the contract? Is that what you're going well, I'm No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying based on what the, you guys asked us to submit, uh -huh. that wasn't submitted. Okay. So my question was, in. my question is, is you're basing your decision on the fact also that he stated that he is going to leave a vehicle here. That wasn't a requirement. I'm sure if it was, I'm sure Wes's no, and airline wouldn't have a problem doing the same. However, both airline and Wes's do have the equipment that was required. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm confused as to how that decision was made. Well, it I doesn't seem clear. Well, I argument as to why I chose WW Tone. I made points. So I want to spin up your whole three minutes, but I thought I was real clear on why I chose them and what strengths I thought they carried. Right, but you would, I thought you would mention something about the fact that he was getting one, but again, if we're going based on what was submitted. I did, I did say that, that's correct. But I mean, so what, based what, on what? The invoice so that's not signed? You can um, stop her, ta her, her time, her three minutes, since she want to go through it. Excuse me, she got my three minutes. No, 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 I'm stopping the clock. Yeah. I'm stopping the clock so we Thank can you. go through the package. She got my three minutes. So that, that's fine. So let's go. What, what page? Well, I'm just I'm referring to the if it, I'm asking you if that's what you're referring to. If you're referring to the to the what was submitted from worldwide, mm -hmm. it says that yes, W and W all area towing. There's 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 a price on there. But if you notice where it says buy your signature, there's no signature. Okay, so you saying because they don't have a truck, what else do you say? Well, they I'm, don't have? well, that you guys required that. Okay. In this, it says it is required that they have that okay. one. Mm -hmm. They don't. And what other, what other point besides that? Is that it? Well, I mean, that's, I mean, you, you're asking us to submit something, and then you're they also saying. Everything. They had uh, recommendations. They had numbers back. Where as did, did we? Not, where, no, you did not. We did have. We, not? we do have recommendations. Let me pull your package right now. You okay. I have not one recommendation that says a number on it, because I called everybody. We, we don't have phone numbers on there, no. We do no, not have phone numbers, have but we have a list of recommendations, so and we said that we would provide those upon your, upon your request. Okay, man. What, what else is it? Because I don't want to go back and forth with I, you. I'm just, I'm asking, asking you to clarify. I'm just, just asking clarify. to clarify why the decision was made to go with a company that basically said they're going to do something that wasn't required. Had we all been given that opportunity, as you said or somebody else said, 
if a and w or i'm sorry airline was given the same opportunity i'm sure everybody would do the same thing but based on what you guys asked and what was submitted that's not what the decision was based on well, it was uh, for correct myself. it was for myself so and maybe i'm misunderstanding that's what i'm just saying i'm asking for clarification that's all i'm saying for me ww had everything that was required of them that's why i voted for them uh, they don't. I think you brought up a, a good point. I didn't catch that one thing. I wish you would maybe let on uh, that thing with the um, about that heavy duty equipment. I didn't catch that when I during my review. You telling me this after the vote took place is a little after afterwards. Maybe you could. I didn't. I, I mean, the, the vote, I don't even know it already happened. So I just want to say I, that was a good point. I just didn't at the time. I didn't realize that. So, I just so at this point, point, there's nothing that can be done because now that it's it's is, is already really been voted on. So that. is there also, can I ask the question? Is there something, if he's, there is? Well, I'm not sure or not uh, if um, the requirements of the proposal were not met and a vote was taken in, in, in steer me here if I'm wrong here. The requirement of the proposal was not met and the vote was taken based upon um, of the things that were presented, I would think maybe there's a chance that uh, it could be revoted on or brought before the board again. Excuse me, Mayor. Can I speak for a second? Uh, no, you gave her your three minutes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> the vote is what it is. So you voted to um, hire that certain company. But at any given time, you could bring it back before the board and ask if they would like to use more than that one company. You can veto it, Mayor. It's not an ordinance. You can't veto it. It's not an ordinance. It's a motion. Does that, does that help, Manny? I mean, yes, I guess. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, fellow elected official from Village of Dixmore, I want to speak on behalf of W.W. Torn. Uh, they tow for our village and have done a fantastic job. You guys have hired our ex-police chief, um, Mobley, who experienced the towing services of WW. Uh, you're talking about giving back to the community. You're talking about events. Uh, WW Towing does that. And also, I stand on behalf of Ms. Karen Hicks. I've attended Thorn Ridge High School events. Ms. Hicks has been there and been there for the kids. And I think you guys ought to reconsider that. But uh, W.W. Towing also, to make mention, we, d we have had semis in our community towed, and W.W. Towing has had the uh, semi truck to uh, tow it, as well as I can speak for an incident that occurred in the village of Robbins, where they did uh, take a semi truck off of a gentleman that was crushed. So. Come on. Uh, good evening to the village of Dalton and the Honorable Mayor and elected trustees. It's always a pleasure for me to visit from Chicago, especially to check and see if our water bill has been paid or is up to date. We're on a payment plan with Chicago. <laughs> You know, I'm messing with you, man. I came out to try to break some of the tension in the room. But seriously, what's going on here tonight has been to my life work 75 years. This is not just a one-time occasion for me. I've been doing this since I became a voter and voted for John F. Kennedy. This is my Super Bowl activity. So I salute the communities that's out tonight because you need to be out every night, not just for this, but the school board as the Creightons would say, the library board, the park district. The only way the public can know what's happening to your tax dollars is to sacrifice like those who are out here tonight. And I salute you, especially the few youths I see in the house. But I'm out because Karen is my friend. And you know when friends ask you to stop by and in their interest, of course, I would rise to the occasion. But personally, I'm honored to say I know every trustee Thanks to Karen, because she invited me to a trustee meeting a couple of years ago. And then I made it my business to get to know you all, because I knew you were all truly st uh, stewards of democracy. And I'd like to thank the mayor personally for visiting our 
you talk about his 50-20 program, he took the time to come down to our summer advantage while a young person stood in front of Governor Quinn in a mock debate and the mayor was sitting next to the governor and trustee uh, uh, Stubbs was there too. She was citizen trustee at that time. She's been since elevated. And Mohammed was there and Tiffany, I spotted, I didn't even know Tiffany, but I knew she was just like some of my student government people. In fact, I thought she was a student. I didn't know she was a trustee and so forth. But getting right to the agenda, I'm sorry this matter is before this body because me knowing the ways of the world and what happens politically, I think it is unfortunate that this matter has percolated to this public airing because if all of us was about our business, then this wouldn't be any airing of this here tonight. So I just wanted to say I personally deplore that. But I would like to say it is through her involvement that brought me to the position where I'm really advocating, as the mayor knows, a city and village coalition, student government-wise, and you should be really promoting that student board of education right out there at Thorn Ridge, because that's the national role model which all student government groups could emulate in the United States of America. So I will continue to come on out because I don't consider it to be a sacrifice, but a civic responsibility. So I salute you all. And I would like to make one constructive comment. Please include the, com the public, what is it called, citizen comment before you vote the public's money. Because the same little titter tay we just heard with that towing business, it was too late. Because once those votes Sorry, take place, three minute mark. cut. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mayor and the Trustee. Karen called me and she told me what happened here with the motion. I met Karen a year ago when I put on my musical documentary. As a matter of fact, that was the first time I was ever at one of your meetings. And the support that I got from her, from her was phenomenal. She introduced me to everyone that she thought could help me because for my sh with the production that I put on. When she told me what happened to her, it touched me personally because I had experienced something like that on a man to five job once before. I had been on the company for like 25 years. They put a new girl in, in a position and she abused her authority. And she gave me a, a lure. She gave me a bad report. And it wasn't true. There is nothing any worse than to know that you're doing your job and someone destroys your character. Because you have people who, who are achievers. And whenever they go, whatever they do, they do it well. They put everything into it. And she's that type of person. And when someone comes in and say that you're not doing your job, there is nothing, no worse, that anybody can do to you. So I think that what the board needs to do is look at the report, find out the character of the person who reported that she was incompetent, because that's what that meant. And then do a review on him and find out what was the reason for that, because her character has nothing to do with anything that's not being done correctly. What report are you referring to? Well, the report, whoever reported to you that she was incompetent and gave her a demotion. Who, who said that someone reported to me that she was incompetent and gave a demotion? Well, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure that you know, Karen, and it wouldn't be you. <laughs> I mean, you know that she's a... Where did you get your facts from? Well, I'm, I'm assuming that someone... You can't assume now. Okay. Where did you get your facts from? Well, yeah. It had to be that someone reported it to you. That's what I was no. under the impression. No. For, first of all, after all the, the comments are made, I'm going to make a rebuttal in regards to, because, you know, there's always two sides to every story. True. And sometimes when people are affected, they tell their side of the story, and they tell it to their friends. And, um, and, and their friends feel hurt, too, you know? But, but I just want to give. There will be some clarification after everyone that came here to, in her behalf to support okay. her. Um, we're going to clarify. Since she's chosen to use this platform to bring about an employment situation, and this is not the platform to do it. Okay. But since she's chosen to do that, 
I'm going to give some rebuttal to her okay. choice. Thanks a lot. Thank you. How you doing? Don Shaw, 141 um, Park Ave over here. My question to the board is, why not put Dalton first? And this is regarding the towing contract. Why not put Dalton first? We have towing contractors here in the village, and none of them work for discussion today. Everyone's doing business with Dalton but Dalton. Why is that? The Board of Trustees, in my opinion, has abdicated their responsibility when they allow the mayor to put five RFPs out. Five, just five. Selectively five. Why? When they allowed the mayor, I didn't put them out. Did you direct your police chief to do it, or did the police chief do it on his own? So Let me he hand delivered, one second, Mr. Mayor, he hand delivered, hand delivered five RFPs selectively to five selected businesses. Okay. Instead, I'm not done yet, instead of putting it to an open bidding process. That's mm -hmm. a fair way to do it. Okay. Why wasn't it done that way? And actually, that's a question to the Board of Trustees, because I believe at the end of the day, there's checks and balances. You have the executive branch, you have the legislative branch. The Board of Trustees must also do their due diligence. And you guys have abdicated your responsibility. I want you to know that right now. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the time. <laughs> but at any rate, everybody think the mayor does everything here. We have hundreds of employees that, that are responsible for their jobs. I don't touch everything. I don't see everything. If something is brought to my attention that I don't see, I take action on it. But there's certain responsibilities that are given to each and every employee that work in different departments, and hopefully they will handle those responsibilities like they should be. So if for you to say that to allow the mayor to put out five RFPs, it's incorrect because I didn't put them out. Okay, now I'll, I'll, I'll counter that and I'll ask you a question. Were you aware that the police chief was out there selectively going to those five businesses? I don't like the word selectively. It was, you know, only like five businesses received the RFPs. That's selective. Well, I mean, well, what do you want me to do? What, what do you want me to do about it? Have an open competitive bidding process. Okay. That's the fair way to do it. Okay. Okay. With, you got with that? A, with a hundred. All right. Now, with a, with were you hundred, aware that the police chief was out there? With a hundred. Were you aware of that? I was aware that the police chief was doing RFPs. You were yes. aware of that? Yes. Okay. I was. So you know that he was reaching out to five businesses. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Okay. Something you're not on top. You're not on top of. You know. <laughs> okay. So, you know. And at the same time. But where, where's the Board of Trustees? It, it seems to me that you guys are, again, advocating your responsibility. You're getting this information at the board meeting. Where's the information? Are, is the department heads properly informing the Board of Trustees? You, you know what's going on? Uh, and, and I'm sorry, Chief, because I may be going over my time. When you consolidate your committee meetings into one committee to hold meeting, the Board of we've Trustees lost the all their mark. power. You need to go right so back. So we've reached the three-minute mark. Yes, Chief. Ms. Chief, you need to go yeah, back to your committee structure. Someone behind you wants to speak also. Thank you, Chief. You need to go back to your committee structure. Sir, you have someone behind you that wants to speak also. Sure. You're being inconsiderate. Good evening, Mayor, Board, officials, uh, city. I just wanted to uh, actually formally introduce myself. My name is Early Walker. I am the owner of WNW Towing. Um, and I wanted to clarify something. As far as the package was concerned, as far as the heavy duty equipment was concerned, the requirement was not to have a truck. The requirement was to have a truck available, readily available. It said, stated, clearly stated in the, con in the contract, or in the proposal, I should say, that we are to be contracted or have a company that we use in need of heavy duty towing, um, which I've actually used West before. Um, real good friends with the owner of West. Uh, I've used airline. Um, we have a working relationship. Um, aside from that, I do want to say that um, I am grateful to the board for uh, the election. Um, I am a young entrepreneur. Um, I've grown my company tremendously. We started with one truck, and we've grown to about a fleet of 15 now. So I just want to say I do appreciate the business. Uh, we do give back to our community. We don't just come in. We don't just, you know, we're a community-oriented uh, company, I mean, as they say, as far as the references are concerned. So I just want to clear it up. We, that was not a requirement. I am purchasing a truck, um, but that was not a requirement stated in it. Thank you.
Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. I am Trustee Maureen Forte from the Village of East Hazelcrest, 17429 Loomis Avenue, and also on the Board of Directors for the Chicago Southland Convention and Tourism Bureau. Karen is an associate of mine, and but the reason I'm here tonight, I'm just in awe of what's going on. I came tonight to congratulate Karen Hicks. She is a frontline trainer, uh, ambassador for the Chicago Southland Convention and Tourism. She completed the training and she is now an ambassador. An ambassador is very vital to the hospitality of our communities and she has completed that service and her photo and bio is in over a million um, circulations for the Chicago and Southland Convention. And all I know of Karen is of good character. But the biggest thing for me tonight is to congratulate her and the village of Dalton for her being an ambassador for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Good evening. I'll only need 20 seconds, so don't worry about the time. Um, I'm here in support of Karen. Mr. Mayor, you're right. A lot of us don't know all the facts, but we're here to get the truth. Uh, and respectfully, there are three sides of every story. Karen's side, your side, and the absolute truth. So I pray that the truth will be revealed. That's it. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, trustees, and citizens. I have a very quick question. I live at 151st in Blackstone, and for my 17 years here in the village, my garbage has never not been picked up. I came home at 5 o'clock today to pull my can in. My garbage has not been pulled. Is there some reason that the garbage is not being picked up? I don't know if anyone else is on Monday. Well, one thing I can say is that um, we don't really have daily control over the garbage company and their route men. But due to a lot of heavy flooding last night, I would think, and it's happened before, that those, those um, uh, garbage routes weren't fully serviced. Usually they come back the next day and pick up the garbage. So I'm not sure if that was happen what happened, but last night we had terrible flooding here in the village. So, um, and I'm not making an excuse for him, but that may have played a part in the reason it wasn't picked up. All right, well, if it isn't tomorrow, I will call Homewood, and, uh, Homewood Disposal, yes. I believe it is, and if not, then I'll check with the village. But yeah. uh, and it's never happened, and I do understand the flooding, I've seen it. Right. My area has not experienced it, but it's just not the norm, and right. I don't want it to start. Sometimes on, when you have the holidays on a Monday, you know they pick up the following day. Uh, uh, Do we have a holiday on this? No, no, oh. I, no. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But that may be uh, uh, in some instances where your garbage wouldn't right. get picked up. Right. But I know last night there was a lot of heavy flooding. I'm not sure if that's the reason, but um, you should call home with disposal. And 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 I've known where people have put the garbage out late, and they've called home with disposal, and they came back and picked it up. Right. I've had that happen. So. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, it's a company that tries to be accommodating. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Good evening, uh, Mr. Dalton, and all the officials. I'm here in support of Karen. Um, uh, I've known Karen quite a while. She's uh, always incorporated me in coming out to be support to the village. Uh, I'm good friends with the mayor. Um, I love them both. I don't know what the real issue is here, but I just want to say she's a very passionate person. You know, there she's not always politically, you know, she's not a political person, but she's very passionate about everything she's doing. And uh, I want to be a, continue to be a support to the village of Dalton, and uh, I hope whatever the situation is can be resolved. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else want to address the board? Yes, sir. I got his three minutes in the back. No, that's yeah. I'd like to ask the trustees 
if any of you are personal friends with the owner of W and W, because Michael Smith is, and I can prove it. Tiffany, you are. And have you ever been to my business? Yeah, I have. Have you? Yeah. Thank you. For what reason? Don't say it. <laughs> so you gave Thank me you, Mayor. Basically. You're doing a good job. I say Wes's an airline do the towing. You say what? Wes's an airline should be doing the towing because you're personal friends with the <coughs> owner of W and W, and so is Michael Smith. Just because Michael is don't mean I am. Oh, just because Michael is. Thank you. Have a good night. Are Thank you, you trustees you and residents. Just because Michael is. Who is Michael to you? So, what they got to do with anything? Well, Thank you, Okay. Just because Michael is. Okay. Can we have order, please? Order, order, order in the audience, please. Hey, thank you. Well, um, since there's no more people that want to address the board, just the first thing I want to address is that uh, to Ms. Parker, you talked about the credit card, the mayor's credit card. That credit card is the village's credit card in every department. Uh, you mostly all the departments use that credit card. The only reason my name is on that credit card is because I'm the mayor of the village. In every department, the public works, administration, any department that has to make a purchase, they use that village credit card. So. You said the residents want to know. I want to clarify that. Secondly, you know, I, I'm really um, sorry that Ms. Hicks chose this platform to discuss an employment issue, but there's two sides to every story. First of all, Ms. Hicks wasn't demoted. And, and secondly, when we talk and have conversation, I don't expect you to lie to me. It was verified. I got a witness. Thirdly, when you're in that car, that car is not meant to be in Harvey and not meant to be in Riverdale. Fourthly, that car is not meant to personally pick up children every day when you're advised not to do that and put this village at risk in case you're in an accident. And fourthly, Ms. Hicks went back to the police department because she requested to go back to the police department on several occasions to me. Now, Ms. Hicks got mad at me because I didn't return a phone call. You don't return my phone calls? Well, let me tell you, I get about 60 of them a day on these phones. And there's a lot of people that probably will be upset because I don't return these phone calls. Not that I had to explain it to her, but I was sick. My mother's been sick. And that's a priority to me. So I text her, and she got it on the phone. Let's meet at 3.30. She never texted me back. And while I was sitting with someone to discuss another matter, she decided to call that person and tell that person that the mayor, who does he think he is, to have me meet with him on 3.30 on Friday. And I told him it was a weekend, which was totally untrue. And she, sent, and, and she said that she never received the text. And in a meeting downstairs, she showed a phone where the text was on it. And if you didn't receive the text, how can you call someone and tell them that you told the mayor you weren't going to meet with them at 3.30 <laughs> since you chose to bring this before this platform? Now, we all have friends. And we could talk to our friends and say, hey, well, I feel mistreated. She was not demoted. She asked me on several occasions, and the chief can verify that, to go back to the police department. The only thing that was available to go back to the police department was the clerk's position. There was no demotion. There was no taking her salary away. The position she went in was a salary that is um, supported by that position. There's two sides that is not a demotion. That, that, that has nothing to do with it. You were, we were outside the police station. We were outside the police station when, you, when I text you. You were outside the police station. Not only that. Not only that, the chief, the chief had conversation with Mick Six in regards to her going back to the police station. And chief, I'd like for you to share that information with, with the people here. 
We had a conversation about the clerk's position, which would technically be a records clerk for the police department. We had a conversation about what the salary would be and that it is a new position and that it would be a union position and that there is a contract and the contract is what governs the salary for the clerk. One of the things that so many of you got up here and talked about was integrity and honesty. Now, if I have a conversation with you and you lie to me and I, and I, and I got proof, how much is integrity is there there? Now, you know what my first resort was? Since she was an at will employee, was the terminator. That was my first impression to do. But you know, after after I hired Miss Hicks, we had a conversation. I told her how many people that didn't want me to hire her. But I did it anyway. And I upset some people that was here on this board by hiring her. And then when you lie to me, it makes me feel like I made the wrong decision. Especially when people told me, don't do it. But you know what? I let my heart get into it instead of my head. So what did I do? Even after catching a lion, and she requested on several occasions to go back to the police department, I called the police chief. I said, do you have anything available there? After I hired her, she said she didn't have any transportation to get to work. I made a phone call. Can you help her out to get transportation? Three or four hours later, she rolls up to the city hall and said, thank you, mayor. I'm in my new car. I try to help people. There's two sides to every story. It wasn't a demotion here. And even after I caught her lying to me, I didn't fire her. She still is gainfully employed. She has to go back to the police department, and that's what we obliged her with. So that's the second half of the story. And we all can have our friends and family come in here and say how great people we are. But why don't you bring your haters in with you? Because we all got them too. So all I'm trying to tell you is that there's two sides to every story. I try to act independently when I make my decisions on hiring people and when I terminate people. And I don't really do the terminations. I got a village administrator there. I'm not doing the day-to-day -day evaluations. I don't handle everything day-to-day -day here. You know what I predominantly do? I try to bring businesses in here and create relationships so we can be recognized as a good community instead of one that the bad community we've been recognizing before. <laughs> and it's hard because you know why? People said, we've always done it this way. Well, apparently it wasn't working. We gotta figure out another way to get on the map other than for bad things that we do or for things that happen in our village. And I'm not, I don't expect everybody to like me. Because you know when you make decisions, when you make decisions, people, if it's not in their own interest, they mad at you. They mad at you. But you know what, what I take into consideration? I take into consideration the 24,000 people that's in this community when I try to make a decision. And it's hard to do. Ms. Smith, you cut her tree, but you didn't cut mine. So that's my side of the story. And I got one side to tell. Chief, look on every phone call that I, every message that I sent you. When kids are in my car, why are they in my car? Because the train has taken all day. Every time I take a kid home and put them in my car, I text you. Miss. excuse me, downstairs, my phone does not work. When you called and asked me, did I get that message? That message did not come through until I came up the steps. Okay. So since we're doing uh, this out in the public, I, I'm never in that. And in okay. I'm in Riverdale, and I'm in Harvey, because those are where my schools are at. That's where you see me at. When I'm in Riverdale, you have, what's that school? You have the school all the way there. What is it, Roosevelt? The school is in Harvey. The school is in Riverdale, right by Avenue Train. That's why you see that car over there. Rosa works over there and three more. Let me just say this. I'm never in no other place. Let, let me just say this. Okay. Let me, let me just say this. You have not used that car for personal use in Harvey and Riverdale? Never used that car for personal use in Harvey and Riverdale. Okay. Never. 
Okay. So you're saying that when you got this text, when you I were downstairs. I was downstairs and it didn't come through to how many times have I said my phone on? Well, okay. Mr. Mr. Irvin got okay. me a phone March 1st because my phone never, it does not work downstairs. Okay. So and when I'm with so when I'm with someone and you call them and you say, and I, I told the mayor, I told the mayor, and I told the mayor, I'm going home to be with my dad. And we never had that conversation. We never had that conversation. We, we, we never had the conversation. And if you didn't get it until you came upstairs, and I'm sitting with that person, you still was aware that you got the text. You got the text, and, and you talked to that person about it. And I'm sitting with them. And I sent you another text. And I said, did you get the text? You told me no. And when we had our meeting downstairs with the human resources person, you, you scanned your phone and showed us the text was on there. And right there in that meeting, you even told us that you never got it. Okay. Thank you. We are going to move along. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Okay. Go ahead. Let, let, yeah, Barbara. Mm -hmm. The last meeting, when the chief spoke about the different companies for the towing, yes. it was mentioned that the reason that one company wasn't, wasn't considered is because he didn't have the heavy duty right. for the big trucks or whatever was stalled in the street or whatever crime they had committed. Yes. But when we come back to the same meeting, nothing is resolved. Can you all resolve these things in your own private meeting and vote on it and then bring it to the village? You can't do it that way? Well. Because see, like tonight, it was like double talking because I understand, understood him clearly to say that what they needed was a towing company that had heavy duty. Right. And this one that was voted on did not have the heavy duty. Well, so you know, um, the way it was presented to, yeah, the way it was presented to the board and the board make their decisions, <laughs> they, they, the board kind of controls, you know, the vote and, and the board chose tonight to to, yeah. The heavy duty, right. and that's that's what the young lady had was came. Seen. It wasn't a requirement. It wasn't a requirement. It was just suggesting to either have a contract with another company to do heavy duty, but he didn't necessarily have to purchase a truck. A uh, truck. But he said that he needed a company. That he, he did. Had. And he, and he do, and he has that. It's in his package. He do. He has a relationship with the other people, such so as he, he stayed has in West Tone. Right. Has one that he can go and buy. Correct. Mm. Correct. Right. Well, thank you for coming out tonight. Can I get a motion to adjourn this meeting? Second. Okay, so motion and second to adjourn this board meeting. Uh, it's at 10:37. Roll call. Trustee Brown, Aye. Trustee Pearson. He's a uh, Trustee Pearson was absent. He had an excuse absent. Okay. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Hunt. Uh, yes. Trustee Henyard. Aye. Motion carried. Five eyes. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>